Hello, everybody. I am a hello, everybody. Anna is in Reykjavik. She's going to play this beautiful tournament, Reykjavik Open, which is going to be held for the 39th time. Anna is there back for the fourth time, if I'm not wrong. And she is one of 400 players. Anna is going to face one of the strongest players in the tournament. His name is Platon Galperin. He is the Ukrainian uh, originally, but he's playing under the Swedish flag. And he's rated number eight in the tournament. So it's going to be a very, very tough match for Anna. It's going to be the first round, but it will not also be easy for her opponent. And both of them... Uh, her opponent, Platon Galperin and Anna, they're about the same age. Her opponent is one year younger. So it's going to be a duel uh, between two very young, I would say quite young players, but yeah, very young players. So it's just such a beautiful tournament. I must say that a Reykjavik Open is one of my favorite uh, tournaments. It's one of the biggest Open tournament. We have 400 players. There are actually 13 players from Sweden, but I'm sure there are other countries which have more players than uh, the Swedish uh, group. And let's see when they will start, you know, the first round in an open tournament here, a huge open tournament with 400 players. It might uh, take some time before the rounds is uh, starting. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's see when we will see the first moves on the board. So, yeah, I'm so excited and, you know, Iceland is a very, very special place to us Nordic uh, players. I would say it's just a, a part of the Nordic countries. I've been there myself not so many times. I actually played this tournament, Reykjavik Open, a long, long time ago. And this tournament has been held for so many years. It actually started 64. So the tournament is celebrating 60 years. It's such a huge tournament. And uh, it's such a huge and classical and long played <sighs> tournament. And yeah, I'm going, I'm so exciting um, to see when they will start. They are a little bit after time. That is actually very, very typical in an open tournament. Let's hope that they will uh, start at any moment. And the first tournament was played in 64 and there was a closed um, round robin tournament. It was actually a very, very famous player who won it. It was Michael Tal, who also uh, was world champion. I'm not sure about the year. And he was the winner of the first tournament. Last year winner was a Swedish player. It was Nils Grandelius. Very happy for that. And let's see who is going to win this tournament today. But we are still waiting a bit. Anna is, she has 21, 15. You can see she has 450 points less than her opponent. And Anna is rated 106 among these around 400 players who are playing. Exactly how many players there will be, we will know after the first round when the tournament starts, uh, have started. There are some players who might not even make to, to Reykjavik. There have to cancel for some different reasons. It could be others who can join the tournament, but it's such a huge, huge tournament. And it's a tournament where everyone is playing in the same group. And I myself, I love this kind of tournaments where you can play together. Even if you are low rated, you can get the chance to play against very, very strong players. One of the grandmasters, maybe one very, very, uh, very um, a living legend. We have one of those here. We have, for example, Vasily Ivanchuk from Ukraine. He is the number two in the tournament and uh, with about 26, uh, 15. So he's one of the older players, but he has also been one of the strongest players in the world for a very, very long time. Now he has, with age, that's very natural, lost some rating. So I'm still exciting to see when they will start, what will her opponent play, what would I expect? I. 
uh, I haven't played against uh, Galperin myself. Uh, he has played in the Swedish league, but I never got the chance to play with him. So I don't know him so well, but I would actually expect him to go D4. But let's see what will happen when the game gets on. So there are still some moments and this is very typical. I just hope they will start the game like in some few minutes, but the first round in the round robin uh, uh, but the first round in the round robin is um, the first round in round robin is always very chaotic so uh, so uh, that's very very typical. So, uh, yeah, so we are waiting a little bit more. So I, I played there in the 11th tournament. That was 1984. That was actually 40 years back. And it was just enormous experience. I spent a whole month, whole month on in Reykjavik playing in first in the Grandmaster Round Roman tournament. I played with all these legend Icelandic players. And then I also played in, in the Reykjavik Open. So that was quite a long time. And then once again, I came back that 95. So these are the two times I have been to uh, Reykjavik and played quite a long time. And uh, so now I am sitting here in Stockholm while Anna and 400 other players are playing in a Reykjavik Open. And uh, we will see when they will start the game. And here we have them. We here we have them. We have her young opponent. He's sitting there behind the white pieces. Anna is not there on the board yet. She is, uh, or maybe she's there, but I can see her just yes, now. She will be there at any moment. And of course, they are all waiting. We can see lots of players behind. It's just such a huge, huge uh, tournament. And such a beautiful uh, tournament, really, really. So there are players coming from the whole world. And here we have Anna, and she's coming to the board. And uh, I think they have already uh, shaking hands uh, like you do before you start the game. And that's normal what you will do also when uh, you do it when you go to the board lots of times. And of course, also when the game will start. And it's quite good to have a little moment when you sit at the board, you sit um, um, you sit at the board just, just to feel the tournament. I remember how uh, the ex-world champion or the Michael Budvinik, he said, you should come to the playing hall at least 15 minutes before and to feel the tournament, to get focused, to write your score sheet, because this is a classical tournament. They're going to play with classical time. And the most popular classical time is that you have 40 moves for two hours. You all the time you get 30 seconds per move. And after 40 moves, both of the players, they will get 20, move, 20 moves, 20 minutes each. And uh, so they have quite a lot of time. The game will normally be like three, four, five hours. It can be shorter. It can also be longer. But these are the classical time these days. And uh, both of them are sitting. They are applauding. So there are there is a speech from someone that's very typical when you're starting. But they, of course, they don't want to delay it too much because this is a tournament with a very tough schedule. At least I would think so. They are playing nine games and that's very typical that you play uneven number of games. It has to do with the colors. It's easier to make five, four. You have maybe five whites and four blacks or maybe five blacks and four whites. If you play the tournament with 10 games, it could be that you get six whites and four blacks 
Most people wouldn't mind that, but they wouldn't be so happy if you have six blacks and four white. So also for norms, normally you need to have nine games for to have a chance to make a norm for to become for I am norm. It could be a um, grandmaster norm. It could be a woman grandmaster norm. It could be a woman international master norm. There are lots of different titles you can try to get. And for that, you need to have a nine. A, you need to have nine games, and it will be a tough schedule today. They're playing only one game, but tomorrow they will play two games, and um, uh, so it will be a double round already tomorrow. And they are going to play nine games in a week. And of course, the idea with that is that it's easier for amateur players to be away from uh, you be away from home when the tournament is a little bit shorter we can see how Anna is focused here we can see also her opponent is just yeah, sitting maybe a little bit relaxing they are listening to the speeches but I'm sure the tournament will start at any any moment and these are you know, very, very exciting. Sometimes you play against the player who like to play different uh, first moves. It could be very exciting to see what your opponent doing. I always used to be very nervous these first minutes before the game started, before I got focused, before I felt I got into the game. But uh, let's see uh, we have what. Uh, so I guess both of them are thinking a lot of lots about the game, maybe even trying to relax a little bit from uh, the game. Mm. So um, let's see here. Let's see here. There will be a little bit more waiting, but you can see how huge the playing hall is. I have never played in this playing hall. We played in a um, hotel. Um, the Harpa was not built yet then. And here we see they are shaking hands. This is what you always do before the game start. And let's see what her opponent will play. He has surely made his decision, but he a little bit wants to think, and what is he going to play the first move? And yeah, he a little bit takes his time. And this is actually what I do also. And here it came, he played E3. This was not the move I would expect. He played this a little bit E3 just to get out of the, so just to get out of the, uh, that I don't know, it maybe take a little bit time before I can, let's see now we got it, we should have it. Um, it should have it like this. We should have it like this. And um, why do, I haven't seen the, the move come on the board. Let's see if it will come up on the board at any moment, at any moment. So let's see here, uh, why can I not see? I will make the move here, e3 was played, Anna played d5, now her opponent is playing d3, you know, I think. Could it be that Anna's opponent is going to play the cow opening? Could it be that he is going to play the cow open? I'm seeing a little bit smile on Anna's face. Is he going to play her opening? That would be so amazing. That would be, wow, that would be incredible. Is he going to play his, I think Anna will go now e5. This is, you know, white has put the pawns here just on d3 and e3. He has put the pawns here and he let white take all, black take all the squares in the center. So what is Anna going to do? The most logical is to go e5. You grab the center and this is what Anna is doing now. She's playing e5. Here we have the move here. She is playing e5. And here we have it. He go knight e2. He is playing against Anna. He is playing Anna's open and she is smiling here. We can see how Anna is smiling. I think this is absolutely the first time Anna play against her cow opening in a classical game in a over the board tournament i think so let's see what anna will say after the game but i think it's like this yes so uh 
let's see what will uh, be happening here but i'm sure we will see 92 he has started this he will uh, i i cannot believe that he will do something else than knight d2 and yeah so um this is just so incredible this is just so incredible to see this but let's see why it does take a little bit of time but anything else than 92 would surprise me so so much and here we can see anna is getting focus the, she is uh, really focusing she is playing against her own opener her own openings and uh, she's actually this is the first time if i'm not wrong they are playing against each other in over the board i don't know if they have played against each other uh sometime on uh, on internet i have no idea about that but they are playing against each other here over the board and her opponent have played the first three moves for the cow opening is he going to play the last one the knight to d2 and this is the opening i do not like so much but he played what did he do i no, he didn't go. I'm I'm not I don't know what did he play here. I don't know what did he play here. Come knight to do knight f6. I am actually I cannot see the move what he played. This is something ah what is this? We have this knight to uh, yeah, so, yeah, sorry, knight f6, yeah, sorry, it was Anna, we have knight d2, and here we have it, of course, it was Anna to play, I was getting so excited, I thought she has such a nice pawn center, but it was even she to play, knight f6, knight d2, and here we have the cow opening that Anna has been playing so many times with white, an opening I also had played, uh, never over the board, I don't like this opening for white, I love to have the knight here on f6 or c6, and for white f3 and c3 but here the knight they are going to be on g3 and they're going to be on b3 and i would say they are not so strong there because here you see the knight it can go to a lot of different squares you have this uh, you have this you can move it here to g4 you have it to e4 d5 so you have eight squares when the knight is in the center but when you are for example oh sorry uh, when you are uh, so we can like this uh, when you have a knight here it's just not uh, not as active when it's on g6 or g3 so this is absolutely a natural way to put the knight on f6 so let's see what uh, Anna will do here is she going to play c5 is she going to play knight c6 but these are the most typical move I would say she can also play out with her bishop and um, but it's very very logical to go out with the knights because uh the knights the most logical square are towards the center this knight is normally best place on f6 looking at the center but also uh looking at the king so and Anna now she played c6 um uh, that was yeah a little bit of surprise because there's no pressure against d5 but you wanted to put it here and um so she played c6 it means that this knight will not be developed to c6 it's probably going to go to d7 but later on so the logical is after c6 that anna will play bishop dc d6 she will go castling now we had this knight g3 but logical for anna is to go bishop d3 and maybe queen e7 but i think her opponent is going to play e4 in some moment so let's see and now Anna play h5 and this is actually a quite logical way to play her opponent just go bishop b2 so her opponent just say oh let's go you can hit and he played it immediately so now he's not actually really yeah he's threatening yeah he's planning to take on h5 and i go h4 and this is yes the very very common plan to play her opponent has only now two moves to go two moves to choose from because the knight is attacked we can see there is a threat to take the knight so where is the knight going and why is going down here and this is actually very uh it looks very very strange uh, it looks very very strange to have this knight here on f1 so what is the knight what is black white planning actually white is planning to get out with the knight and it could be that white is planning h3 knight h2 knight f3 
and want to say that this pawn has gone very far. I will have control of this square. It could also be that white is planning e4 and then try after e4, you have this possibility to get out with a knight to e3 and then maybe the knight to come to f5. But we can see that the getting the knight has come almost to the original square. It was standing on g1 first, it was standing here first, now it's on f1 and it has taken one, two and three moves to get the knight here to the first row. So it's a very, very strange opening. It's a very strange setup, but this is what uh, White wanted to play. I wouldn't feel happy with this. I would just say that one very normal move is to put this pawn on h3 here already now, is to put it because after a move like g3, we see this one doesn't have such a good square to go to and the king will be restricted. So this is actually a move you like to play. If if Anna will not play h3, I will expect that white will go h3 very quickly and then maybe knight h2. Uh, so I think if Anna plays something like, you know, we go bishop d6, I expect white to go h3, knight h2 and try to bring maybe out the knight here to uh, f3. So, let, so here. So um, Anna is now taking a bit of time. They have been playing quite uh, quickly here. They have been playing quite quickly. The first move, but this is not so strange because we see the cow opening, the opening Anna been playing so much, her own opening. And I am, wow, I could never guess this. And I was so surprised with the first move. But when white played both e3 and d3, I think we all knew what was going to happen. So uh, now Anna takes time and you know, this kind of opening where you give all the center, we can see black, Anna has got the pawn on e5, she's got the pawn on d5, she's controlling all the square in the center. So this is very beautiful. She has a knight on f6. And why is white giving this? Yeah, this is a little bit like how you can play with black sometimes. The idea is to say, yes, take the center, come, come, come. And when you have put your pawns in the center, I'm going to attack them. I'm going to attack them because we know that the pawns can go forward, but they can never go uh, backwards. So, and uh, here Anna is taking her time. Um, here Anna is taking her time. And of course, this could be, yes, it's, it's quite natural because it's a big decision. Is she going to play h3 or not? And uh, is she going to, um, is she going to play h3 or not? Uh, if, so it makes a big difference. I would actually say that h3 is the normal way uh, would be, um, I would say that this is the most uh, ambitious way to play. And it's also normal, very annoying to have a pawn here for white, but it can be that this pawn in the long run could be a weakness, but in general, what it does, it with a pawn here, it will restrict, uh, let's say, goes like this and with a pawn here it will restrict the king so the king will be um worst uh, place but it will also be even in until the end game if we start changing pieces and let's say the f pawn disappear and we get a rook rook to the second rank then this pawn is so so important so this pawn can be important in the middle game you know if we could dream of the king to g1 and dream of a mate here with queen g2, of course. So it's always, but it's also restricting the king. It's also restricting the king. So even in the end game. So this is what I think uh, is a very natural move to play, but, uh, and it's also the moment now, if you make some slow move, uh, then uh, white can play h3 to stop it forever. So let's see uh, what uh, Anna will play. I'm so excited here. I am so exciting uh, to see what uh, what is she going to do. And um, 
so yeah so what can she think of yeah she could even uh she could and this is also what uh black white things are maybe if you go something like bishop f5 uh then maybe later on there could be uh something kicking you so um so yeah but if she wants to go out with knight i would say that this bishop should go out earlier so anna she played bishop d6 this was absolutely a natural move and let's see a plan could be let's say we go h3 now we will see h3 and white played it immediately white played it immediately and this is very very logical and also what i thought that uh, if you want to go h3 you have this chance for black but now you don't have it any longer and this knight is probably going to f3 this is probably why it's going to go why it's going to be uh, and to be situated so uh, but it could also be that white is planning now to go e4 yes so this pawn is not getting further so the plan for white is probably to play this white could also think of to going e4 and then try to get a knight out here on e3 so And yeah. so what will I expect Anna to play here? Uh, I don't think she will go short castling when you have played. I think she will go, is it queen e7 she's going to play here now? It looks like she does that. No, she plays bishop e6. And so what Anna is doing, she's developing her pieces. She preferred the bishop to be here on e6. And it, the reason is she wants to go out with the bishop because she wants to bring out the knight. And the knight cannot go to c6 any longer, so it will go to d7. And after that, the knight can go, it could go to b6, but in not such a good square. So her opponent, here he came, knight f2, knight h2. And now the plan is to go knight f3. This is absolutely the plan for uh, white here. The plan can also be to go knight g4, actually, but I don't think knight g4 is such uh, such an important move to play, such a good move to play, because if you want to go knight g4, maybe Anna could move her knight, and after that the pawn push could be. So uh, let's see uh, what, um, I, I think more knight f3, but not yet, knight f3, yeah, I think this is actually the plan. Let's see Anna go knight e7, then I think we will see knight f3, and now we can see that this could actually be some kind of uh, bothering and if you go e4 we will have knight d4 and now white black white black white will actually grab the bishop and be a little bit careful this is actually something very good to remember that even if the knight is worth we have this is the position at the board the knight and the bishop they're about three points each like three pawns but they are strong in different kind of positions so when we change a bishop for a knight normally we want to have something for it it could be that we get time we get development it could be that we double the opponent's pawns it could be that we somehow win something because we know that if we, the bishop pair these two bishops together look at them they are controlling all the squares on the board the white and the black squares so the bishop pair is the strength and it's the strength during the game it could be in the opening it could be more in the middle game or in the end game because the bishop pair needs to have open files so this is something we like uh, like to remember to keep and if we get the position with let's say equal number of pawns and there are pawns on both sides, there are open files, then we have this static uh, advantage with the bishop pair. So we always want to have something back when we change one of the bishop for one uh, of the knight. So we can see how they have been playing quickly. They have almost not used any of their time. And... Um, and they have made like a, like a white has made his ninth move, Anna has made eight moves, and they need to make like 30 moves more 
to get uh, to the time control. So there are lots of things going to happen. We are going to see some open files also finally, but here we have a completely closed position. It's completely closed. And what is uh, Anna going to do here? What could I imagine? Uh, is she going to go E4 now? Uh, if she goes a move like E4, I would absolutely, uh, uh, what would I guess? Uh, could it be that, uh, yeah, this is absolute possibility to play. It could be then that uh, your opponent, yeah, I'm not sure actually, because the idea would be if you go something like this, we've got 97 and this one will be uh, not, ah, this is not possible. You see, I'm a little bit tired because we have this pawn hanging. So maybe knight g4 would be absolutely a possibility even then. I want you to see that, that this is not possible because this is hanging. I normally like to take out the moves so you see what I am speaking about. And so after e4, yes, maybe knight g4 could be a possibility. And the idea is here is to attack the knight, which is in, uh, defending the pawn. So after this, knight g4, we are attacking a piece which are defending the pawn. It could absolutely be a possibility. So um, what is... Uh, uh, Anna going to play here. She could absolutely go uh, knight d7. She could queen d7. This is a move that surprised me. I don't like this mode too much, actually. Um, yes, no, I don't like this so much um, because I think now we will see knight f3. This looks very logical to me. And after knight f3, this knight might come to g5. And uh, so yeah, maybe then we need to go bishop f5 just to stop everything. So it could be, could knight g4 be a move here? Yeah, maybe this could be a move here, absolutely also, but then we will just uh, grab it. No, the knight is not good here, it's absolutely not good, but could white, uh, what could white more play? Maybe white can go, can white go e4? So we have this plan of going knight f3 and having the knight here and Maybe this is just getting fine. So maybe e4 is a logical move. And where is Anna going to go with this? Maybe she needs to go something here. But now we have this knight g5 and we have some uh, planning to take this bishop. Um, so this could absolutely be a possibility. If you try to attack here, maybe we can go something like knight g5 and we see that this is defended. So what a white play. Oh, this was what a move. What a move. Queen d7 was played here. Sorry. This was the game. Queen d7. And now a3 was played. This is the position at the board. This is the position at the board. And it's like... Um, no, it's not really like a hedgehog. A hedgehog, normally you put the bishop, you put them fianchette on g2 and b2. So what is the idea with this move? The idea is to take space with b4. Finally, you can see all white pawns are on the third rank. White pieces are only on the second rank. So one idea is to take space here, a3, b4. And if black plays a5 to stop b4, you can absolutely do that. But then this king, where are you going to put it? Where are you going to put the king? You're not surely probably you don't want to go long castling. So after a move like this, now maybe a4 is coming. I guess this would be a very normal move to play. And the idea of this little move is that if white runs it, you have b4 and you get more space. So a5, I would absolutely say, let's see if we're coming out here, maybe bishop b2, and we have a position like this. And can we can we keep on playing something like knight c5? I'm not sure if that could be so good. Maybe we have knight f3, and we can see that this pawn is just getting under attack. And there can be, if it goes something like that, maybe we can have, uh, yeah, I don't know if we sometimes can have uh, something like even taking d4, but I wouldn't really like it. Or we start here now to play against this pawn center. This is very far from the game. A3 was played. So we can see that white is a little bit playing all over the board. And when white played, this is so, sorry, A5 was played. Uh, when white is um, playing, uh, 
why this plan lay with all over the board and why this plane all these small moves now what this was actually 96 this was actually a bit of a surprise to me uh, I guess now uh, B4 will come. This looks very logical. And after that, you can go C5. So it's a little bit like what Anna is doing. She's doing the same now. Like her opponent said, yes, come, take space and then I will attack you. I guess her opponent will actually go B3, not B4. Yes, to keep it like this. But then maybe Anna can just go long castling. She has her king quite safe here. And can she, she can have some plans of going rook g8 and then g5, starting an attack and uh, here on the king side. So knight a6, the plan is um, she needed to have a square for the knight. She might go long castling. So let's see what her opponent is doing. And we can see that they have both played very, very quickly. They have both played lots of moves in quite a short time. Uh, white is having already, uh, already white is having more time than when it started, two minutes more, because when you make a move, you will get extra time for each move that is made. So uh, knight is six, it could be that this was, uh, that it was a good move. Um, again, Anna is planning a long castling. Maybe she will go with the knight, Probably not the c5. It could be knight c5 or knight c7. And uh, it could be absolutely going to both of it, both way. So I guess a3 was, maybe a3 is a waiting move. Could we see this knight f5, f3 coming now? Could the, this be uh, a move? I'm just wondering, can we go knight c5? And the idea of the knight c5, if you go b4 here now, we will go knight a4 and we have this, uh, square here and let's see if we play something very very silly I just want to show you that this is actually a queen trap <laughs> so it's just a knight on a4 it's on the rim but sometimes it can be annoying because it's a hole on c3 so uh, here is the position no it's not this is the position at the board um, and now white is uh, white is thinking here. Uh, what will white do? B4 is actually a very logical move to play. What is um, what will uh, Anna play then? It could be then that she will go B4. That she will start attacking this pawn because white will need to do something about it. It could be that she will do that. And the idea, of course, you can go B5 to threaten because we just grab it. So it's just hanging, that is not possible. So you have to make a decision. Are we going to take on c5? Are white going to defend it like this? But then this bishop will not be so active on b2. So here we have the position a6 was, uh, a3 was played. Anna didn't play a6, but she put her knight on a6. She put her knight on the rim. And we can see actually white also has the knight on the rim. Um, but they are both heading for a better square closer to the center. So sometimes it's not wrong to put it on the rim, but later you or sooner you need to put it on a better square. So the knight is in the game. The knight is playing in the center because in the center the knight can go to so many square, can control so many square. But here on the rim, you can see it's only control four square, one, two, three, four. But in the center, it would be controlling eight squares. So this is why a knight uh, normally is stronger on uh, the stronger in the center and we could actually see that a knight on a6 if white this is just far away but could you could imagine a white bishop here on d6 this white bishop d6 would actually control this knight so a knight on the rim can sometimes be controlled by a bishop but it's not normal in your own camp but it can absolutely happen so a knight on the rim is always a little bit tricky and here we see people walking around, players walking around. I would say they, some players like to, uh, when they play their games, when your opponent is thinking, some like to sit all the time. Others uh, like to go up and walk, a little bit relax from their game, maybe think of something else. Maybe they're curious to see what is happening in other games. But most of the time, you are very much focused on your own games. You're very much thinking of your own games, uh, on your own game. 
because it's so important. And when you play, you play these games three, four, five hours, it feels so much. It's just so, so important to be, you know, to do your best, hope things goes well. And it's just something very, very, uh, it's very, very beautiful to play. I have played lots of classical games, but, and it's just, yeah, these and, and, and rapid are of course also nice when you play a little bit slower rapid, but it's just very, very special to play classical game with such a long time and compared with when you play blitz where you have almost no time at all and you have to um, uh, believe in your intuition, you have to make the decisions so quickly. We are not there yet, uh, but we know that Anna has a habit like also me, um, her mother. I forgot to present you that I am Pia Kramling. I am Anna's mother here. So I am the one who will be commenting when Anna is playing this tournament in Reykjavik. I will be here the whole tournament and I'm sitting here in, uh, I'm sitting in Stockholm so and I can see the, the beautiful playing hall from inside. They're playing this beautiful concert hall, Harpa, which and I remember when I was there 84 and uh, no, I was there 95 and then they say we're going to build a beautiful concert hall and here is where we're going to have Reykjavik open in the future and now we are in the future and the tournament has been held here for lots of years. I don't know exactly how many years, but it's just a wonderful place for a very, very nice, big, strong and exciting open tournaments with about 400 players. Anna is rated 106 from the start. I don't know if all the players um, are there and she has made her move. She made her move knight a6, a3 and uh, yeah, her opponent is now thinking he hasn't done anything yet. He hasn't done anything yet. And this is the fourth time that Anna plays in Reykjavik Open. Uh, I only played it one time and uh, I th this is the fourth time if I'm not wrong. She played her last year. She made I think five and a half out of nine plus two and I think she was quite happy with that. Uh, she played there also two years ago and then she played there for some years ago and every time she played in Reykjavik Open. So now her opponent will play and White played before. This was the logical move to play against uh, to play this because with A3 you are planning before. So what is uh, Anna now going to do? So this is actually one move. She's going to play this move in two moves, but it's okay. She's actually um, a little bit shelling uh, the pawn on B4 uh, and saying, what are you going to do? Are you going to take it? I will absolutely take back with the knight. And now this knight have such a nice square to, to, to be, uh, to, you see the knight will be after take here, knight takes c5, now the knight is in the center. And if we move like bishop b2, we would absolutely go knight a4. And you see that this bishop is attack and we wouldn't mind to change the knight for the bishop uh, because the position is open up. And we would also see that this pawn structure would uh, be uh, worse for white than for black um, because we have this a little bit of uh, a backward pawn here, but we can see also there's a bit of a hole on c3. So let's go back. Here we have it. This c5 is a move I like, but c5 could be a little bit difficult move to play because Anna already put the pawn on c6. If she goes c5, she goes, she makes the move in two. She makes the move in two moves. She would prefer to have some made something else and to make it in one go. So what would I expect her to do? She could go long castling. Um, she could also go rook g8 actually could be a move to play rook g8 and then to go g5. But if she go rook g8 uh, and g5, I just want to show, I think we will have something like this 
and if you go something g5 it could be that you will bow knight f3 and you're getting attacked this pawn is getting attacked and this is just you can see how it looks where this doesn't look good you have to defend this maybe queen c7 and what is the knight doing the rim this is not a good plan this is absolutely not a good plan i like c5 we could also go maybe knight c7 and then uh maybe knight c7 but let's see if we go maybe something like e4 but then maybe can we go d4 or we could actually now start to attack this pawn with b4 this is also a way of attacking the pawn uh and actually a very natural way of attacking the pawn so knight c7 could be and um, maybe bishop b2 is quite a normal way and then a5 i'm just wondering if we go knight f3 here can we just uh, are we going then this one is not so easy for us to defend but also b4 is hanging so we can make the choice we will have to probably just to take and to play something like maybe this like this and then to go here either to go e4 or to take the pawn but this is far away so now it's just such an important moment her opponent play before this is very logical a3 the plan with a3 was to go b4 anna play knight is six and white play b4 anyway but was thinking a little bit and white still has uh, lots lots of time uh, lots of time even more time than when they uh, started so uh let's see so knight c7 or c5 this is what i would expect uh, anna to play she can also go long castling if she wants to um but if she goes long castling white is planning white's plan now after b4 is of course one is you take space control a little bit square we take away this square for the knight but the one other one is also you want to fianchetto the bishop and the bishop is looking for e5 so the plan for white is to go bishop e2 after that to go knight e5 and to take e5 pawn because this pawn can no longer be defended by the knight no longer because this knight had to be on d7 to defend it and so black uh black will be, it will be a little bit awkward for black to defend this pawn because with the queen um let's see we make something if you make here i just want to show you let's see we make something i don't know here but then we have knight f3 perhaps and you see that this e5 pawn is just getting very very weak this is just something white is hoping for so it's important that black now take a decision to play against white's uh, white's pawns play against b4 either with c5 or with knight c7 bishop b2 and maybe a5 this is another way to play against the pawn because white is planning to put pressure on this pawn um of course uh you could play like this bishop b2 could we go queen here but then maybe we will have c4 and then all of a sudden we see the pieces are becoming quite awkward this is absolutely a threat and why did i want to go queen in seven yeah the idea was if we go knight f3 maybe i can go something like bishop f5 i can defend this this could absolutely be a way but c4 is still coming or still i probably have to go a5 to challenge b4 so it becomes I would say a little bit sharp here now uh, a little bit sharp because there are threats slow threats against this pawn e5 and we know how important these um uh the central pawns are central pawns are e5 d5 and uh black cannot attack white's pawn because white yes put the pawns on the third rank so the only pawn white black can attack this is b4 this is actually the only pawn black can attack so anna is sinking into big thoughts here what is she going to do but i expect her to go either knight c7 i don't know c5 but c5 is maybe the move i like most of all the moves in the position so uh, yeah so these are the moves i expect she can also go long castling but i'm not sure this is so good because after bishop b7 we see that this is getting a little bit weak can we go queen e7 maybe we go knight f3 we're putting some more pressure here 
armed uh, E5. We're also planning some knight G5, so it could be that we need to go something like this. And just the idea for black is to go F5, to go G5 and try white. White will probably go, I don't know if you go C4 directly, or maybe we should go a little bit this rook C1, and the plan is to go C4. Probably the king will need to go away, but you have C4 here, and how can we have this position? I'm not sure if you should go knight C7 or how we should do here. So, uh, but black's plan is to go f5 and g5 and maybe uh, to take space. But this is far away, this is far away. So I would say, uh, sorry, this is the position. b4 was played. This was the last move here and uh, I, castling was not played. Sorry, it was not played. No, let's go back. We have this position is the one at the board, but I would guess here long castling one move. I would also guess Anna will go knight c7 to put the knight in a more central place, a little bit waiting for um, black, what waiting for white to do, or maybe c5, which is um, very aggressive move, but white, white, black Anna wants to challenge this pawn, she wants to play against this pawn and ask what are you going to do with this pawn are you going to let me take it or are you going to take on c5 or if you play something like this you will defend it but this bishop will later on be very very passive so uh, these are the three main moves i would say for anna to to make here uh, and the idea with b4 is also a little bit of scaring black to make a long uh, castling because we have a pawn push here if long castling will come we will start our pawn push here on this side so it it a little bit makes it more difficult to make the choice to to make uh, to castle long side but we can see that anna doesn't want to castle short side because if she would do that this h4 pawn i just want to show if you go here we have knight f3 and we can see that this pawn will not be easy at all to defend so the rook needs to be here on h8 it needs to defend the pawn and so this is round one in Reykjavik Open, this beautiful tournament, 400 players. You can see the playing hall, lots of players there behind, many, many grandmasters. Anna is rated 106 in the list I saw the, from the beginning, but it's not sure it's her rating now. It could be some players couldn't play or some more players have a right. And her opponent, Platon Galperin, he is um, originally from Ukraine, but he's playing under the Swedish flag. And he, he, they are about the same age. He is actually 21. Anna is, uh, is also 21, and, uh, but she's one year older. And uh, she, so there is a clash between two young players. And we can see that White has played a very, very exciting opening. White played the cow opening. Anna's own opening is just tremendous and very wow, I must say. When white started, e3 started with this little pawn move, then this move, and we saw this knight coming out here. And this knight has made a long dance here to come to h2. So he had made one, two, three, and four. Actually, it could have come here one and two, but the way uh, the way white played it was in four moves so it's a little bit like white is actually losing time seeing what black is doing and when black takes space in the center with the pawns white is going to attack them this is the position b4 was played sorry this is the position b4 was played here and uh, now anna is just uh she is thinking a little bit more uh she is spending more time but she has anyway played it quickly and we can see that her opponent yeah he likes he likes to go up 
And, and of course, this is what you can do when you play in a classical tunnel. You can do it also when you play rapid in blitz, you don't have time. So this is a huge playing area where the players are allowed to be. Uh, they can go to the bathroom, they can take something to drink, they can also eat something. Uh, these days we are not allowed any longer to eat at the board. Uh, but we can eat, we can eat something on the side, and of course, when you play a game which are four, five, six hours long, uh, you will absolutely need to take something. But there are players who don't want to eat anything during the games. Others, like me, I like to take something after some hours because I know that my energy can absolutely go down. So Anna, she is a. Uh, Fully, fully focused. She's playing against her op um, own opening and uh, she is playing again over the board and actually something she really enjoyed to play. And uh, and of course, Reykjavik Open is one of the most, uh, I would say, one of the most lovely tournament to play in because it's such a huge tournament. It's a uh, place from all over the world, from Sweden. I told you before, there are 13 plays, which is quite a lot, but I'm sure there are more players. There are bigger groups from other uh, countries, but I didn't have time to check that yet. I don't know how many grandmasters, but there are players who are not rated at all. And I think the number one is Diak, uh, Diak from Romania with like 2617. And then Vasily Ivanchuk, this uh, legend from Ukraine, he's number two in the tournament with about 2630. And Anna, she is rated 106 among all these 400 players. And the one Anna play against, Platon Galperin, he is one of the favorite. He is number eight on the starting list. So, um, uh, what, uh, and we can also see that Anna's opponent, he is having a very high rating, 25.55. He's actually rated number four in Sweden. We have uh, Nils Grandelius, we have uh, Ferdinand Hellish, and then we have uh, Vitali Sivuk, who also originally is from Ukraine, but playing under the Swedish flag, he's actually the Swedish champion. Uh, so he is one of the top players uh, playing for Sweden. Uh, the one, uh, Platon Kalperin, the one Anna is facing here. And so she is so full of focus. It's, she feels that this is an important moment. She feels that, and it is because she's seeing White is planning Bishop B2, looking at E5, and after Knight F3, looking at E5, but also planning Knight G5 to grab this bishop and to play against the bishop pair. So this is what White is planning, and she has to come up with something. She cannot play slow moves because then White will actually get the better position. I would say this is about an equal position now. It's about an equal position. Uh, we have had, uh, so let's see, like, oh, sorry, like this. Oh, oh, sorry, like this. We will have, this is absolutely an equal position now, but there we have it. So here we have it. And um, Anna will so what will Anna do here? So she has to, she see this is coming, bishop b2, bishop e5 is coming. Both of these, bishop b2 looking at e5 and then knight f3. And so this is quite a clever plan White has done. First White put the knight on h2, but White didn't play knight f3 because White can only take e5 with one piece. So White go out with this bishop because then the bishop will attack e5 and when the knight came to f3, there will be, you can see, there will be two pieces attacking e5. So this is actually the plan and we see how Anna is now spending time and this is very, very important that you feel the moment when you have to take your time. You feel the moment when you have to uh, make uh, good decisions. There is maybe not only one decision, but you have to make a good decision. And this is absolutely one of these moments. And I really need to 
uh, make a decision how she is going to defend E5 or if she, instead of defending, because this is actually one of the rule, when you are getting under attack, you can defend the piece, the pawn, or if it's your king, which is getting under attack. But another way is actually that you is launching an attack. Uh, and I can't launch an attack against the white king, but she can launch an attack against this pawn. This is actually the only thing she can launch an attack now quickly against this pawn on B4. So this could absolutely, uh, I think this is actually very, very important. And she can do it in two ways. We could see it. she could go C5, attacking this pawn like this. She can go knight C7, bishop B2, and A5. And now again, she is attacking this uh, pawn on B4. But we can see, let's see her opponent make something like this. I just want you to see that if you grab this pawn, this pawn will be hanging. And an E5 pawn is a more important pawn because it's a center pawn. So in general, you wouldn't like to change this pawn like that. And if it goes something like castling, I guess knight a 3 will come and we will have threats against this. We will have threats against the pawn on h5 here also on h4. But this is far away. So these are the moments. Uh, th these are the things she can consider before knight c7 was not played. Uh, so she can go knight c7, c5. Knight c7 is one move. I told you before, I expect, or maybe long castling, that will be very sharp. Or, but I don't think she dares to do that. Or maybe even c5. These are the three moves I am expecting her to play here in this uh, position. Um, um, yeah, it, she doesn't really want to play in the center here. I wouldn't say so. Uh, because let's see, if you play a move like d4, I would just say that this pawn would be very, very weak here. It would just be very, very weak here. We can see we are getting threats here. And if you go something like that, we have also knight d4, we're defending the square on c3. I just want you to see that this is not possible because we have this very, very important hole here on c3, but you can defend this hole in different ways. But so b4 was played, but you don't want to go d4 here because this pawn is getting weak. It's not so easy to defend it. So, um, you, you, and also, I don't know if you really, we, I don't think we want to go e4 either. I think this is maybe there will be a bishop b2. There could be some plans of taking on f6. We can see, I just want you to see that if I do something, let's see, I go something slowly, maybe we can come, yes, maybe, maybe we start taking on e4. If you take back, we could probably, we can go maybe to take here, or maybe we do this again, knight g4. We have this idea that we're attacking the base, the base, this knight is defending e4, we attack it. And when you do something like this, maybe here we can see that e4 is becoming extremely weak, so weak, and there's also threat against e4. We can see there are threats here in e4, it's also threats against g7. So, but this is not here yet, but these are things which are up in the air. So we don't want to move e4 because uh, this pawn will become weak. We don't want to move this move pawn forward because it also become weak. So these pawns are better placed here now. So, so these are the things I am uh, believing Anna is thinking of. It looks like they are having the sun on the board. This is actually something I'm never happy, happy with when it happens to me. Uh, so I do hope they can uh, organize it uh, because it could be quite, it's quite disturbing to get the sun in your eyes and you don't want to play with <laughs> sunglasses. So um, it looks like it, or maybe, maybe it could be the, uh, yeah, maybe it's not the sun. I'm not really sure but it looks looks like it because it's so clear and it's so much but anna is in a way full of focus maybe it doesn't disturb her i wouldn't be happy to get it uh because uh i i just like it when it is a little bit shadow but i also like to have good light for the game and uh you can see they're playing on electronic board of course this is the reason we when to make the moves we can see it uh, but there is 15 minutes delay so this is the reason why i have to make the moves here i will have to make the moves here on the board but um and this is quite typical 
that they have it like uh, these in tournaments now that uh, the, the games are delayed with uh, 15 minutes. And uh, so Anna, we can see she's down to one hour and nine minutes. It's still lots of time. Her opponent has used like five minutes, not so much time. And um, the, but uh, it's still lots of time. I just do hope that Anna will not get into time trouble. And her opponent, yeah, when Anna is thinking, he is just uh, taking his time. Uh, taking his time, no, he's just walking around. And lots of players like to do that. Walk around in the playing area, maybe take something to drink or to eat, just to save the energy. Because these games can be very long. You really need to save the energy. The energy. And here it came. Anna played long castling. She played this brave move, long castling. But what is she going to do now here? I expect her opponent to go bishop b2. So this is actually what I expect her opponent to go. Is there something she can do here now? I have no idea here. What can she do? Because there's getting threats against e5. I'm sure this is the move. This is actually what she played. I think we should you will see absolutely bishop b2. Could there be something else? It could be knight f3. It could be c4 also. Um, c4 I don't expect so much. So bishop b2 looks very logical. Anna is sitting still at the board. Knight f3 could also be a move that she will, uh, that white will play. So one of these moves are the most uh, probably. You could even go C4, but no, I believe we will see uh, one of these uh, the moves here now. So C4, no, Bishop B2 or Knight F3. We will see something hitting E5, something going uh, to attack this pawn. Could it be the Bishop coming out here, attacking on E5? Could it be the knight coming here, attacking an e5? So this is a little bit of a weakness, this pawn here on e5. And I think white is going to attack it in some way. So if white goes bishop b7, bishop b2, sorry, I think we will see queen e7. Uh, maybe we can see this, what will happen knight here. And now, because the knight is planning to take on e5, now this is probably the move we should do. But what did happen? Can we go d4 in a move like this? No, this, I was just wondering. This, we will just take on f3 and we will have fantastic position. So this is not possible to play. The idea with d4 is, of course, I just want to show that we are attacking e5. We are attacking e5. We are also looking at this knight battle place. We want to take the knight to damage the pawn structure. But black has this idea going e5, threatening f3. And there's nothing better you can do than to go knight e5. And then we have knight c7. We keep our pieces together and uh, we have uh, and maybe later on, uh, we're not really planning to take on F e5 directly, but uh, we're not damaging our pawn structure. I don't know if you go something like c4, maybe we can start an attack with queen g5, and we see there are threats against g2. This is very far away, but this, let's see, her opponent is still out. Maybe, it, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, her opponent is still out uh he's not here yet so maybe walking a little bit around and uh, and anna she is using her time to be focused to flip a plan what is she going to do what is she going to play if her uh after her opponent's next move and this is something very very good to do that when you sit at the board uh, you can guess what is your opponent going to play. And here, bishop b2, this is absolutely the most logical move to be here. She has to plan, how am I going to play against this? And if this is played, I would say queen is 7 is a good move. Queen c7 is not uh, this, uh, sorry, bishop b2, queen c7 is not a good move because we can see that this is the square for the knight. This would absolutely not. This this knight doesn't have any future any longer. So this knight will need to come back to b8 and you don't want to do that. So no. So let's see. So here this is. This is like this. This is like this. 
here we have it we have this position and uh no we don't have it this is the position long castle was played this was a very brave move i would say by anna but she wants to play uh aggressive she's absolutely having this plan now uh now we saw bishop b2 was coming white is looking at e5 white is having this threat now a knight to f3 a threat to actually grab this pawn to attack this pawn even more so Anna this one is attacking but Anna defends it but she will need another piece to defend e5 she will need another piece to defend e5 so absolutely this is what she will need to do and which one how she will do that and I would say that queen e7 is the logical move because after you will have knight e7 and this is actually a good way to defend it. Knight f3, could this be a way to defend it? I'm not so sure if this is so good. Maybe c4 will be coming here. And we can see we are getting some problems with this knight because of the c5, why is this knight going? Also b5 could be coming. So this is not such a good move. Um, let's see. So we have this here. This is the position and queen e7 knight f3 and this move and the idea is after if you go something like c4 um maybe we can go f6 g5 i'm wondering if you can go maybe queen knight c7 not also this is also a little bit a uh, little bit maybe we can go king b8 maybe we can start with f6 and the plan is to go g5 here i'm wondering maybe we can even could we even start with, can we play rook g8 and to go g5? Maybe then we have something like e4. Um, how will a position be like this? This could absolutely uh, be possible. If you go something like this, we're not really scared of it. Either we can take, we can also go maybe knight c5 directly to play this position because here we see this bishop is not playing. No, we don't want to have like this. So white also has to be careful with the pawns, which pawns to move forward and which moves not. But this is the position. Queen is on d7. I would say queen e7 is important move. What more could she play? She could actually play knight h7. What is happening? Knight f3. Can we go f6 here? Would we dare to grab this pawn? I'm not sure. We have knight g5. What is going to happen here now? We have giving in a pawn. And how is the position like this? We will have a pawn less, but we have some open files. So what will, I would just say that in a position like this, probably white will try to go long castling also, but uh, to play something like this is a pawn up for, uh, is a pawn up for white. And um, maybe this is absolutely fine for black to play. You have, um, because you're giving the h file, you see this rook has become an active rook, maybe queen e7, maybe we can go g5. It could also be that we can go c5 and try to open up to go rook c8 and to open up on the key on the queen side. But this is so far away. This is so far away. We have this position. This is not here. I, I wouldn't expect, uh, let's see here, this is position. Bishop b2 was the last move played here. Um, bishop b2. This is the last move here, yeah. And so queen e7 is what I like. Um, uh, you cannot move any of these pawns forward. It will just be, uh, they will just get lost. This pawn have to stay here in the center. So. So, uh, yeah, of course you can play, yeah, I don't know, I wouldn't like to, if you try to go in the center here, yeah, this is a way to open it up, but what will happen here, can we, yes, we can grab this, we can maybe take here, we will yes, grab this, and I'm just wondering, and we get this rook here now, hmm. We can actually play a position like this because white will not be able to castle. But it's a pawn. We have this double pawn. It's a pawn, but there are some advantages. We'll have a rook to g8 
and why it will never be able to cost. The plan is to go 95, to go 94 or 93. Maybe, maybe, but this is not an easy choice to make. I would say this would be impossible to play D4 in this position. I would absolutely say that because after D4, if you go something like this, you take, we go knight f3, we will just grab this pawn and maybe we get, we will get some activities to do this. Uh, the idea is to have here, we will have maybe knight f4, but this would absolutely be fine for white and no. So these pawns on d5 and e5, they need to stay here. They need to stay on e5 and d5. Absolutely. This is what they uh, need to do. So again, there is not time for this. After this, this will be uh, difficult. Well, I don't have difficult, but we will force white, uh, black to play this move. And now we can go knight g5. Um, if you go bishop f5, we might even just, can we just grab this pawn? Probably we will just do it. Maybe we will just grab here also. Can we do this? Maybe not. We will get some activity here. It's not clear, but this pawn will get quite weak here. So maybe, maybe we just, can we play like this? Bishop f5. Maybe here, I'm just wondering, maybe just knight c4 and we go for this bishop and we can see where is this bishop going we cannot go here because we have knight take f7 maybe we change rooks first this is absolutely not possible so we will need to save this maybe something like i don't know one knight maybe like this to defend everything and this is going to go very very crazy here now there are pawns hanging here but these pieces are also getting very uh not so well placed. Yeah, this is actually, actually this could be possible to play. So knight c7 could be possible, knight f3, and then you need to go e4, you need to play this, but white can go for this knight g5, white can go for this very slow move, knight d4, which is quite a solid move. You see this knight cannot be pushed away because the pawn is on b4, the knight stands beautiful here on d4, and if white wants, when white wants, white can take uh, take care on e6. So this is quite uh, quite a logical mode to play. Mm. So let's see. It's such an exciting moment. What is Anna going to play after bishop b2? The move I like most is queen e7, and then after. Uh, queen e7 to defend like this with knight e7, but I would just say this is not an easy plan to find. Uh, easy plan to find because the plan is to go g5, maybe rook g8, g5, maybe maybe f6 and g5 also. And normally later, this is very typical. When you castle alongside, normally you need to make a move like king b8 because it could be that white will go c4, the c line will be open, and then the king will be safer on b8. So castling short side, normally you can stay with the king on g8, castle alongside lots of time, the king needs to go to b8, it needs to go to b8, where it will be uh, a more uh, safely place. So let's go back. This is the position. It's like this. Anna is thinking she's down to fix 56 minutes. They have made, um, she has made 11 moves and we saw she was blitzing out the first move. She was playing very quickly. Her opponent also, but her opponent, uh, Platt and Galperin has been continuing playing quickly. And let's see, Anna go D4. Oh, wow. She is going for D4. This is absolutely something. Wow. I didn't expect it. And I expect her opponent actually to take it. And let's see, knight f3, how is this position going to be? There is no way that uh, black can defend this pawn any longer. There is no way, but what has black? If we can get this here, we have knight to d4, and we get knight to f4, and how is the position like this? Uh, and the idea is, of course, if you go castling, I guess maybe we have some tactics here. Yes, maybe we even can go, I have no idea, maybe we can play something like this 
and this is just getting very very tactical because we have an idea rook h6 rook g6 and we see we have a rook we have a bishop against the king we have another bishop and we have a queen here so this could be dangerous this could absolutely be dangerous but of course in a position like this with a knight to f4 maybe white would not take go castling can might maybe play a move like bishop f3 and how is this maybe we can start some tactics i have no idea knight to x e6 maybe we take maybe we play like this this could absolutely be an idea to play because now this knight on f4 is very, very strongly placed we have a check here and you will have to go king f1 and how is this we have a position which has opened up uh probably we put the king on b this is what i wanted to say uh that when you cast alongside normally you need to make one more move and there's another reason why we want the king to be on b8 we see here white has one bishop this is not the game this is analysis and this bishop is on white square we want the king on a black square but let's go back to the game this is here anna has played so aggressive i am wow so surprised and but she is uh she wants to open up the position and this is nothing wrong uh, to open up the position with uh the with the king in the center and so she is ready to give this pawn she is ready to give this pawn yes to open up because we can see that this king is in the middle here so she wants this line to be open up against the king and if the king will go long short castling like this there might be things here against h3 and maybe we will do something like this i'm not sure how we will do this it could be that we also start having some very very uh, tactical threats and now we see this h4 pawn is very good because it opens up for this plan rook i will just show a rook here and rook g6 and that would absolutely be uh, a mate so i think her opponent is going to take a bit of time uh, white has been playing very very quickly but this is such a important moment such an important moment is white going to take the pawn on d4 white will win a pawn or is white going to keep the position locked here with e4 this could be a way of keeping it locked with e4 absolutely and what well, and then but then i would say that this pawn on h4 is good now there's no more threat against e5 uh maybe now knight c5 knight c7 could be an idea yes so you can try to get the, the uh, try to get the knight into the game it could be even sometimes with knight b5 knight c3 could be in plan absolutely and if this coming we have g5 we are playing against the king side and we see that this bishop is looking at the wall this bishop is not looking so much any longer at f6 so and and and, and the rook behind because the pawn on d4 is stopping it so this is still far but d4 came so anna has played i would say the most ambitious the most aggressive way uh not possible but one of the most absolutely with her long castling so actually when we go back we have this position bishop anna castle here alongside white developed the bishop to b2 and here we can see that black has developed all her pieces the king has castle and while white has developed all the pieces but they're all standing on the second rank so they're all standing on the second rank while anna's pieces are all standing on the third rank so white has done this giving the center to anna and now she is pushing a pawn in the center she played this pawn push she is giving a pawn but she want to open up the position and she is really uh playing very aggressive uh very much uh open up files to play for an attack to try to get to the opponent's king or to get an initiative she's giving a pawn for to have the initiative and this is just a very very exciting way of playing and it means that you have to play actively you have to play aggressive you have to play with your pieces and of course if it's possible to play some 
pawn attack, you can do that. But she wants to open up the file. She wants to open up. Uh, uh, she wants to open up uh, the file. Uh, the files in front of the the king. So um, let's see here uh, what her opponent will do. And this is one of these critical moments. This is absolutely one of these uh, critical moments where white uh, has to make a decision. Is white going to play e4? Is white going for the pawn? Could it be that? And But I just want to say that mm, knight f3 doesn't look like, oh, I wouldn't do that. To go knight f3, that looks very, very strange. After knight f3, you can, you can take on e3. You can also go, maybe we can just go um, something like, uh, if a move like this, I guess we can just take on e3. Absolutely. We can absolutely take on e3. And maybe we can also go e4 here. Knight e5, the only way to defend this could be even knight c4. Or yeah, maybe knight e4. Could this be possible? Oh, this is getting crazy. We take on e3 and we take on g2. This is getting very, very crazy. But you can defend it with a knight to c4, perhaps. And then e3 would be defended. But let's so go back. Her opponent took the pawn, and uh, a little bit like saying, "I don't, I don't think you have enough for the pawn. Uh, I, I will just grab it." And let's see. Anna is very, very. She is making her move immediately, immediately. She is playing so. And this was absolutely the plan. And this is when we know the moves, we should make them quickly. Maybe just a little bit look up to see do we have some other alternatives. But then afterwards to make it, her idea to go d4 was to give the pawn. Now this is a very logical move. Her opening plays also quickly. There is some more attack on e5. And I will not be able to defend it. But now it's very important. She goes knight d5. She doesn't care about this move. She just, and after knight f4, she takes here. And I just want to show if uh, white takes here, we will just take back here. And this, uh, of course, is also pinned, but we always have f5. So, and now white probably has to go king f1, and we will play a position like this. There is a pawn extra. The question is, what it is going to do here? Could it be a move like bishop e5? We are not scared of bishop g4 because we always have f5. And this is what I wanted to show, that we always have f5 here. So uh, bishop e5 could be a way of playing this. I don't know. Um, but this, I think, actually, we would just, uh, let's see, this would just help us. And we will have knight c7. And maybe now this knight is planning knight b5, knight c3, or even knight d4. And what has happened here is, this is actually, let's go back. This is actually something very important. After remove, like, uh, these are still analyzes. We have this position, uh, I think, uh, but she needs to put her knight on f4. She needs to put the knight on f4. This is absolutely the way to play it, to put this knight more aggressive. If he comes here, knight d4, I would just say knight cd5. Um, this would maybe be, uh, I don't know, knight c4, because now all of a sudden we will have uh, changes everywhere. I don't know, how will this be? Maybe we will have a position like this, but we have exchanged our uh, bishop here, and we can see that white has got the bishop pair, and all kinds of end games. This would be fantastic for white because you have a pawn more. We have also pawns on both sides, so it's a pawn more, and both pawns on both sides. The bishop will probably be stronger than the knight in the end game. So let's go back. This is not the position, but her opponent played this very, very logical. This is the uh, position, knight hf3. And now I just like this knight e5, knight f4 um, to, to just go for, to put the knight on f4, that this was the idea behind, the, 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 this was the idea behind uh, her opponent's, um, uh, the opponent's uh, plan to take on d4, or this was the idea behind her own plan. She played d4, she gave the pawn, but when white took on d4, there is no more control on f4. So she has this idea. Taking on d4, she has this. And now this would be 
too dangerous. I guess we can, can we take here? Maybe not, no, because I just want you to show that this doesn't work. We have this bishop g4 check there. So we would actually lose the queen, but in a position like this, it could be that we can go knight take h3, or maybe we can take with the knight. We were looking at this. This is a better way to play. And can we play like this? I think this would absolutely be double h. I'm not sure this is enough. King h1 and rook g1. I'm not sure this is absolutely right. And the idea is if you go something like this, rook g1, queen d6, we will always have the knight to f3 and we will defend on h2. So these things are very tactical, but it's not clear at all they will work. So maybe castling here could be just a good way to, to, to play this for, for white. Absolutely. I don't know if you have some idea to go rook h6 and rook g6 just to put more pressure here. But if you go something like here, I don't know, maybe what could we play this here and what bishop e4 and f5. I'm just wondering if we can have something like this, rook g6 and king h1, and this will absolutely be just a pawn more. So this is a bit, um, it's, it's a bit dangerous, knight d5. Uh, but Anna has to play actively. What more move could you play? Knight takes here. Knight will absolutely take. Knight f4. I guess this is the right way to play. Could it be something else that she can try? Knight c7. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think she will need to go here. And maybe now long castling. Maybe we can go bishop e5. Can we do, go something like... Uh, maybe we can play like this. I'm just wondering if we can play this. And we can go queen take h3, but this is not enough. Probably just go f4 and everything is defended. Rook h6. Maybe we go just, yeah, queen f3 and we have a check. And maybe the king is just escaping here. So it's it's not so easy to get an attack here. It's not at all so easy. So yeah, I don't know. Knight f4. Can we just castling here? Um, can we just castling? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't look so, doesn't look so, so much for her. It doesn't look so much for her, but it, it's, and G5, we have to be scared with the rook. Can we go something slowly like rook G8, but then take on E6 will absolutely be the case. We take here. And the idea to play like this is if you go bishop g4, f5, you come here. I want to go something like g5, but will I be enough here? Maybe this is not enough to go. We will just have g4, take and take. And I don't know, we will have something like bishop. Oh, no, we have bishop take e4. So it's too slow. It, it's not, maybe not too slow, but it's not enough. It doesn't look like it's enough here. So knight f4, so this is the position. Knight f3 was played. Anna is now taking her time. The knight is not on d5. If the knight was on d5, she could, she would have a move extra, but knight f3 was absolutely a good move. And I don't know, can we try something like c5? And you take here, knight takes. And now in a position like this, this would not be so good, I would say, because we have knight a4 and we are playing against this bishop. Uh, this would be, I would say, it would worse to play like this. You can do it, maybe rook b1 and you're playing along the file, but we are getting maybe more knights in the game or maybe we can even take on b2. So we're getting the bishop, no, in a position like this of the knight c5, bishop takes because knight a4 would absolutely not hit anything. You will just go c5 and the knight is just not well played here, c4. So, mm, so c5, that wouldn't be so good anymore because taking here, we can take back like this. How is this position? But we have knight b3 and we can see yeah, here it came. Anna played it. She played knight d5. I would say this is the position. Knight 
here, Night D5. This is what was played. And uh, this is absolutely logical. I expect her opponent to take on D4. I expect Anna to go Knight F4. And will he dare to go castling? Will he dare to play this move, castling? Anna can absolutely play something like this, but this doesn't work because we have bishop g4 and we can see this pin. And this is what I wanted to say lots of time, that the king here would be so much stronger if it was already on b8, but it's still on c8 and there could be some tactics. So I am expecting her opponent. He's playing quite quickly. He will take on f3 with a knight. And this is also what he did. He has took on f3 with a knight and, um, uh, Let's see what Anna will do. I think absolutely she will go knight f3. She will go castling here. And I'm just wondering, could this be anything here for her to play? Could it be anything here for her to play here? What is this position? Rook e1, then we have rook h6. So how is a position like this? We have given a piece, but black has got two pawns. Can we go? So there is no time to save the rook. We have rook h6. And after king h1, we have maybe, I'm wondering, do we have some tactics here? Do we have some? I'm just wondering, can we go rook e2? And here, could this be a position or not? This could absolutely move. Maybe it's not the strongest. The idea is if you go king f3, this will absolutely be a mate here and here. Let's see, go back. Anna played. We should, uh, no, she hasn't played. This is the position. Knight takes d4 was played. And uh, now knight f4 is what Anna needs to play. She takes a bit of time. And um, I think here we will see it. She plays this very good move. She needs to play actively. One slow move and she will not have anything at all. Now she has some threats here. She's threatening to take on g2. So white has different ways to defend. One is, is does he dare to go castling? He will depend. He will take on d we will defend g2, but then Anna can play this bishop take h3, and it means that Anna has uh, given her piece, she got two pawns, but she threatened to take the rook. There is no time for white to play here because you have rook h6, and in position like this, um, maybe you can go bishop f3. What is going to have here happen here? Maybe this is enough, maybe we don't have anything here now. Could we try something like knight peak here now? And what is going to happen here? Do we have time for queen c7 or queen d6? But we have this knight f1. And the idea is so we defend h2. And if we take here, we will not take like this because it will be made. But white will escape like this. And after queen h2, we don't threaten anything. So this will just be... Uh, this will absolutely be, and we will even have a queen exchange if we want to. So it's just very, very tricky. Uh, can in a position like this, so maybe bishop f3 is a good move here. Uh, so maybe, yeah, maybe this is not enough. Maybe rook e1, maybe rook e1 is just absolutely uh, fine. Uh, and because after this, we have this bishop f3. And I'm not sure how we are going to keep on the attack, how we are going to play here. It could be because we have a knight too far away. If this knight was here, oh, it would be such a big difference. But even if we have, we have one, two, three and four to attack with. White is only defending with a bishop and also with a rook. But the king will be very safe on, F, on h1. So it looks like it's not clear it's not clear at all. So this is the position. What is white going to do? And white is going to take the time and either white will, uh, I don't think white will take on e6. So I'm guessing king f1, we could also have castling, but if white feel that castling is fine, white will absolutely pay, play castling. This is absolutely uh, very, very normal to play. And I don't know, if you play something like this, we have got the bishop pair, but uh, it will not. Something like this, I think we just can grab here if we want to, and to play this position. And queen f3, and yeah, 
we will try to get something here but i just want to see queen b7 but we have always this and you see this knight on f3 this is the good square there's nothing on h2 because the knight is defending so let's go back this is not the position uh, white is taking the time white is absolutely taking the time after knight f4 this was the best move and i could play I have difficulties to see if there is some tactics castling. If we go knight g2, there is just this move between, and these between moves are always very good. The idea is if you take back here, we have bishop take h3 here, and we have uh, maybe we can play different things, but we can maybe also take on f1 and we can play this uh, position. Maybe we can even try to bring in the knight here. I'm not sure if we can do that, but maybe we can, we can, yeah, we cannot take on f1. This is very important. I want to show this position. Uh, after this, white have this bishop g4, we have this problem. So maybe even here uh, could be just some problems. Could it be? I don't know. Or do we have? Can we have tried to get attack? I guess we will go something like knight f3, and maybe now we can play this uh, because there is nothing here. I'm so far away, but I wanted just to show one of the mates because when you're attacking, there are lots of lines always to calculate that they can be made. If the opponent plays the best, it might be you don't have tactics. But the problem with knight at g2 is that this in-between moves, you take back and king to g2, and there's nothing for white, black, and longer, or everything is gone. So uh, let's see what her opponent will play. Uh, let's see if he dares to go castling. Is he scared or of anything? And he will be calculating here. And I don't know, uh, because uh, if he takes here, if he takes here now, he cannot go castling any longer because the knight is hanging e2. We can just go queen take e2. We can take it with the knight also, but queen take e2. So uh, the plan, if white goes castling, white say, I'm not scared of your attack. I'm not scared you sacrifice an h3. I'm not scared you sacrifice anything else either. And then the plan for white is to take the bishop take one of these bishops which are looking towards the white king side and to play with the bishop pair and a pawn more. This is the plan for white if white dares to go castling. So let's see here now. Uh, if But this is the position. So white has to do something against g2. This to take here would only help black because we will get into a pin. Now maybe king f1 and uh but the king has not castle and it means that it will be difficult to get this rook into the play for some time all the other pieces will be better maybe we just want to change pieces because we will have these three pieces we will bring in this knight to c7 we can play with both our rooks maybe to put this rook on e8 but white will not be play, able to play with rook on h1 so this would absolutely be fine for black black would absolutely be happy with this so but here so let's see and knight f4 was played this was the anna's plan and white is calculating is white scared of anything here because if white is not scared this is the most logical move to go castling this is absolutely the most logical move and now if this pawn was not on g7 Anna will go rook g8 and have a fantastic position. But with a pawn on g7, she doesn't have the g file. She doesn't have the g file to play with. So this pawn is actually a pawn which uh, Anna would prefer to be without when she's playing against g2, she's playing against h3. So, and um, yeah, I, I, I cannot see a way for white uh, to... Uh, for black to attack after castling, but it's not an easy choice to make here because we have been looking at, we see this doesn't work, white has this in-between move and the idea after you go here, you take back, there is nothing, we have a check here, we will just go away and we see the king will be very safe and uh, if you try something like this, we can defend this with bishop g4, f5 and we can do even rook e1 and then after something like here, 
we go bishop f3 and the king is so so safe it's so safe it's a piece more and it's nothing for black and one of black's problem is that this knight is so far if this knight was closer on d5 if this knight was closer on d5 Anna could absolutely take on G2, but it needs one, two moments to get there. It needs one, two moments to get there. So, so knight F4 was, this is the position, white has not castle, but this is what we have been analyzing, what I have been looking at. Castling is absolutely the most natural move, but the question is, is white daring to castle? Does white dare to play this uh, move? Or do white want to play something else here? I And we can see, I'm just wondering if, yeah, let's see what white will do. And um, what more? Castling, this is one move, absolutely. Defending g2. One more move could be king f1, you're defending g2, but this position, I believe that white, uh, black absolutely can play. So maybe, maybe they go bishop e5, and after take, we have this, and we remember bishop g4 is not a problem when the f pawn is still here. We will go f5, and this will be absolutely fine to play. So white played long castling uh, not short castling so white played is more white say i don't believe that you have an attack i don't believe that you have anything here in this position so uh, let's see now what can anna do she cannot take we have seen in this knight g2 no it doesn't work because of this in between move here we take back and after this king h1 there is not enough for an attack queen e6 we have seen this and white will be fine after f5 we will just go here and if you go here bishop f3 and if you go something like that we go bishop g4 we grab in the queen this is so far away but it's not enough so so white said i don't believe in your attack actually if anna could bring up her queen to e6 this would be very very good but she is just too far away from it. She is too far away from it. And this knight is so important in taking so many good squares. So she cannot put more pressure on d2. Bishop d5, we have bishop g4, and we see this nasty, nasty pin, and that the king is not so well placed here on b8. So this would not be a possibility to play like this, actually. So, um, So how is she going to play here? Uh, what if she wants to, because now the plan for white is to take on e6 and to play with the bishop. And it just, and we can see in a position like this, and if you go here, here, now we're actually threatened mate in h2, but because the queen stands so well here, uh, white can play just simply f4 and this is absolutely the only move this is absolutely only move because if you play something like that i guess we will go yes rook h6 and we will have rook g6 this would just be winning on the spot so in this position white has only one move and it's f4 after a move like f3 i guess we just go rook h6 and we are bringing in it and this will just be good but f4 is such a good move because after rook e6 we have these many moves but uh, the king will just escape here. And this is the problem. I don't know, we go somewhere, rook g6, and we can see how this king is actually escaping here. Now, maybe we have queen, bishop take f4, but in this position, queen f3 is logical. When you have more uh, material, you want to go, maybe we can play queen h2, king e1. Maybe we, we cannot take on f4, we can try to bring this rook in here, but I guess you go just, can we go king d1 or knight d4? We can even start running away here. And there's a piece up and we can see the problem is black has some pieces, but white has a piece more. And this knight on the rim is so far from everything. So actually, I cannot see a way for white, for black to get this attack going. 
I cannot see it. So because even and if you come here and here, we cannot take with the queen. We have seen this uh, before. We have to uh, maybe we and yeah, this is what we have been looking at. And this is not. Can we play something like rook h6? This could be a better way. Uh, because queen g4 is not enough. We have rook g6 and we can see that this is a pin. We're going to win the queen. So you need probably to go f4 here anyway. And I'm just wondering. We can give it check. And the king is just running away. Could it be king h1? Could absolutely be fine. Because even if we have this check move, we have queen h2. And here everything is just defended. So hmm, I cannot see how... I cannot see how she is going to get this uh, moving. And if she goes something like bishop e5, I guess we just take on e6. Uh, and if we take on b2, yeah, we can play different ways, but we can just take on f4. And here we can see that actually white has got two pieces, a bishop and a knight and a pawn for the rook. This is a very, very good. This is a winning position for white because the bishop and the knight is like six and the pawn one is like seven and the rook is only five. And we also have queens on the board. This would be winning for white. So let's so go back. Um, yeah. So after castling, what can she try here? Uh, we have tried bishop take h3 doesn't really uh, doesn't really work. Uh, knight take h3. It just seems like this rookie one, it's even time. You even have time for rookie one. And this is just a um, very, very important moment because uh, we don't have something like, I want to see queen here, but we will just go, I don't know, can we play this? And then we have, okay, maybe we have rook h6 here now. And we can play like this. Maybe this could be, uh, we get some pieces here. But I, I don't really see, when we give check, we have king h1 here. Uh, and now queen c7. Now we are getting threats. Yeah, this is absolutely why here. Because our king, our king is so strong, so bad. After this, we have this bishop g4 check. And we can see that after a move like this, we have queen a8. And this will just be... Uh, bad. So the king is actually, if we had a king on b8 and why, so maybe a position uh, like this, can we go bishop c2 instead, bishop c7? Uh, if you go bishop f3, maybe we can start, try to go queen d6. And I'm just wondering, we have knight f1, this is very important. And the if you take, we will just take back with the king and this will absolutely be confined. So I don't know, maybe something like rook h6. And this is just getting so tactical. But again, this check, again, I don't know, this is getting here. We're moving up, I guess we can go king h1. And we have, uh, you know, after rook g6, we will go queen h3. And we are keeping an eye on the king side. So, hmm. So one problem with black's attack is actually the own king. White has lots of tactical idea playing against this king. If Anna's king was on b8, I believe her attack would be possible. It would be strong. But uh, like this, it's not at all so easy for her to get an attack going. Even if she has, she has one two, three, four pieces looking towards the king side, to g2, to h3, and to h2. She has four pieces, but white is planning to take away one of the pieces. She cannot get the rook in time. And this knight on the rim is too far away. This knight is absolutely too far away. And if she try, yeah, this is what we had tried, bishop h3. And it looks like rookie one is just still uh, absolutely fine to play. Um, and yeah, I really don't, uh, because after a move like bishop e5, I think we can just go 
can we go knight f3? Could this be possible? No, we cannot because we have a mate here. I want to show it. So maybe, maybe this could be an idea to play like this bishop e5. So we threaten to take this knight. You have to go maybe c3. Could we just try to bring it in? And now bishop b8. Could this be an idea? I have no idea why would this be. But if you go bishop f3, can we just then go? We go rook h6, just try to get this check. I don't know. How much is this? We have it. This looks actually. Why? I don't know why is this. Ah, uh, we have yes king h1, and the king is just. Yeah, maybe we can try to play this, but we don't have this. We have a very very slow plan. F6 is devoided. Try to get in the knight into the game, but I don't know. And now we have a plan of going queen c7 just to attack on h2. It could be, but oh, it's so so difficult. So maybe knight take h3 could be a possibility, but it's so so uh, difficult to take here. And we grab this again because we need to keep our pieces and if rook e1 maybe we can go this bishop e5 could this be a possibility and the idea if you go knight b3 we are bringing away the knight a little bit from the center so uh it's just and also not from center you don't have this knight to f1 so we take it away and now maybe try bishop c7 and then to go queen d6 it could be but oh this is so so difficult so so difficult to play i would say uh let's see let's see what anna will do um so maybe knight take h3 could be the right way to play not at all easy bishop take it any other sacrifice doesn't look like it works and if she play, try to bring in a piece here, uh, this, if she try to bring in like this, I guess we will take this. Can we do this? Uh, maybe we do like this, yes, because we want to have another knight to f4. But this will be uh, an extra, uh, maybe knight f4, I don't know, maybe queen f3, rook a6. We have some idea, rook g6, um, how knight c4 maybe because we will have some problems here yeah this i don't know maybe also rook e4 could maybe also be played here immediately and we see we don't have time for rook e6 maybe because we can go rook f4 and yeah this and we are just defending everything maybe we can go even queen f3 and again we see that these two pieces will be more important than the rook and white has defended a mate on g2. This is far away. Let's go back. Let's go back. Uh, this is the position. What will Anna play? Uh, I would say it's not at all easy for black. White played absolutely the best. White took uh, the king into safety. White played long castle. And so they have uh yeah they have made like uh white has played 17 moves anna has played 16 moves they play quite a lot of moves anna is down on her clock she's down her clock but it's just such a difficult moment she decided to open up in front of her opponent's king and um front of the king and so she gave a pawn and Anna played knight c7. Did she play? No, she hasn't played. Sorry, this is the position. I'm sorry. Sometimes I start analyzing. I put something wrong. But the knight is on a6. And if this one would uh, be close to the king side, this would be fantastic. To have the knight on g5, to have the knight on d5, maybe e5 would also be good. But some are close. But this knight is out of the game. You remember, a knight on the rim could be... Is it could be dim or is dim it's just out on the rim and it's not so good and here what is important is what is taking place on the king side if anna will not break through on the king side she's having a pawn down she is will play with a pawn less and a pawn is very very much so she needs to get an attack she needs to get uh the king 
uh, open up for the king, but is she ready to give a whole piece for that? And actually, if you play something like this and here, now you have giving, we have white has five pawns, black has six pawns. So black has only one pawn for a piece, but is planning to take on F1. So, uh, and the reason is to keep the bishop pair, try to keep the pressure. So this could absolutely be uh, a possibility to play, but it's just very, very difficult to find the right way to continue after this. But I cannot see any other possibility for Anna because this is just very, very important way threatening to take uh, to take yes to take on e6 and this is what we do when we have pawns up we want to change pieces when we have sorry we have this when we have uh, pawns less uh, we want to change uh, pawns this is what we want to do if there are no pawns if there are only one pawn in the end in the game maybe we might even we can stop it or it might be that we can give a piece and it's not enough material to win it. So here in a position like this, white is a pawn up. White has made all the developing moves. All the pieces is out. The king is in safety. And um, so white absolutely want to take this bishop because this bishop is the bishop pair, but this bishop is also looking at the king side. So if Anna makes a slow move like this, we will absolutely see this, something like that. Maybe bishop g4 here first, I'm not sure, f5, and we'll see bishop f3, maybe queen e6, and we can just go king h1, and we see that everything is under control. And after anything like this, we have rook e1, and we will control the e5 square. This will absolutely be just a pawn more for just a pawn more for white. And we see again this knight is so badly placed. This knight is so far away from everything. So let's let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Go back. Uh, so what is it looks like Anna is on her way to move. She is so fully focused. She is uh looking like she has decided or she's on her way to decide also her opponent thinks so so her opponent is back to the board her opponent is back here to the board and what uh, will Anna play what is she going to do she is really so so full of focus and ah uh, she took with the bishop um and this is actually, she took with the bishop, her opponent will absolutely take back. And now queen takes h3 doesn't work because of bishop g4. Uh, what will she do after this move? Uh, because the point is, I want you to see this, this doesn't work because of bishop g4. Otherwise, this would have been winning. If Anna's king was on b8, this would be winning in this position. But with a king on c8, this doesn't work. Anna took on h3. I guess her opponent will take back. And this is what her opponent did. And I think Anna will now take on f h3 and... Yeah, take on h3. And now the point is, if you go king g2, Anna will bring the knight back. So you will not see this. But king h1, and now bishop g4 is coming. I cannot see how Anna can defend this. I think Anna actually is going to lose another piece. I think she's actually going to lose another piece here now. Because bishop g4 is such a terrible threat. This is absolutely a terrible threat. After g6, bishop g4... Uh, Anna goes, she gives another piece, rook take here, but this will absolutely be too much. I think this is absolutely being too much. So, uh, and she gave the check. This is what Anna wanted to do. We have king g1, but the problem here, this is not, uh, she wants to give a check here, queen d1, but after, you can even go king f1. Can we do that? and queen h1 and you see how the king is just escaping how the king and if you give a check here we have knight f1 and we can see that this will not be enough so 
uh, Anna wanted to, she has two little pieces. She needed one more piece to be in the attack. She has only these two pieces. Her opponent can absolutely play both rook e2 or king f1. Uh, absolute book. but even this is fine you give check and now you go yes king f1 and there is nothing else here uh, and she wants maybe to go rook h6 but we can see that it's not we can just go knight f3 here maybe and we don't have any more piece to bring in so Anna uh, it's just very very difficult here but she wanted to see if she could get the perpetual this is in the, the position at the board we can see some players coming and looking we can see some players coming and looking see what is happening because there are lots of fireworks but Anna has given two pieces one piece could be okay to play this but two pieces is not enough her opponent will play rook g2. I think this is a logical move to play. Now, threatening Anna has only one more move to make, and then the king will escape to f1, and this is just... Uh, the king will go to f1. Uh, she only have this move, give this check, because after king f1, and if Anna, she can give him more check, but the king can escape, to e1 there is also a knight to f3 and we are keeping everything under control everything under control so there is just after rook g2 anna is going to have very big problems she only has a queen she only has a bishop to play with and we can see one and two white has one two three and four to defend with therefore there will be absolutely more uh, so queen e3 uh, and even if Anna had one more piece to attack it only would be three against four that would not be enough so we will surely now see king f1 and after king f1 uh, I don't know what her opponent is what Anna is going to do um, because the plan is simply to go knight f3 and queen d2 so we will absolutely this is the position a check here I think we'll see king f1 and after king f1 I guess Anna wants to go rook h6 she wants to put the rook on f6 but we can maybe give a check here king b8 and we can play uh, maybe knight f5 and we see it's a fork rook f6 is no longer possible because we've just grabbed it and we will just take all the pieces or maybe queen f3 so what did her opponent do her opponent ah her opponent played so what uh, so sorry this was the played rook here rook e2 was played anna played queen e3 her opponent played king h1 so anna uh, i i am not sure why uh, Anna will repeat, but it will not change anything. We will have, she will go queen h3, king g1, and we will have queen e3. Her opponent went into the corner, uh, but just, just to a uh, little bit uh, repeat, uh, because, uh, yeah, Anna doesn't have anything better than go queen h3. She can hit the, the, the pawn. But, you know, you can do almost anything with a rook. Yes, not rook f2 is the only thing you shouldn't do. But yes, grab here. And there is nothing uh, more you can do. So here, Anna, queen h3 is logical. King g1 and queen e3. And then the king or maybe the rook will come to f2. So Anna, we have this position. Uh, king h1 was played. I am... Um, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised King is one was played and uh, White just yes, want to make, uh, yeah, repeating a little bit, but White can uh, always uh, change it. And you know, the rule is that when you get the same position three times, you get the same position three times, then before making it the third time, you can stop the clock, you tell the arbiter, we have had the same position three times, I claim a draw but if you have the same position twice that is not enough you need to have it three times so here Anna is just taking her time but there's nothing better she can do than to play the queen to h3 there's absolutely nothing better she can do than that so I expect her to, to play that and uh, 
but she wants to think a little bit and uh, yeah and then her opponent yes can run away outside the corner yes run to the other side of the board with the king and there is not enough for her because we can see that Anna decided she understood that uh, playing with the pawn down is not enough she decided to sacrifice the piece she did it not in the strongest way and she did it another way and then she sacrificed and not only one piece two pieces and we can see that she given two pieces she has got two pawns but now she has only the queen here she has the bishop and white is defending with one two three and four pieces so anna yes wants to think a little bit but there's nothing better that she can do than to put the queen on h3 to give it check she's not allowed to make a slow move her opponent is going up here her opponent is going up but i'm sure if anna is repeating that her opponent will yes not repeat more than twice and then just hide the king to the other side and this is the beautiful tournament Reykjavik Open so many strong players Anna is facing one of those one of these many grandmasters I don't know how many there are Platon Galperin uh, he's uh, representing Sweden but he's uh, originally he's from Ukraine and he's uh, number eight in the tournament and they're both about the same age uh, her opponent is born yeah, one year later than Anna and he's actually number four in uh, Sweden and um, Anna she is 106 among these 400 players play you see some of them behind I'm not sure if they all play in one playing hall uh, it could be that's just amazing if you all have plays in one playing hall but they're all playing in this beautiful concert hall Harpa I think it's named and um it's just such a beautiful place in the heart of Reykjavik. I have never seen this playing hall alive because when I played in Reykjavik Open, it's just 40 years ago, a little bit more than 40 years ago because I think we played in February. Uh, then we played in a big hotel and uh, um, I think it was Icelandic hotel because Harpa was not built then. So Anna is taking her time, but she has nothing more to do than to give the check. There's absolutely nothing else she can do than to give the check. And so I'm just wondering why she is taking her time uh, because she has only two pieces to play with, but she wants to see if there's something else she can do. And uh, probably um, she wants to see if there's something else she can do because she has realized that if her opponent run with the king more towards the center, it will be very difficult for her to get perpetual there's no chance for her to make um, there's no chance for her to 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 mate her opponent her opponent has you see one two three four pieces close defending the king maybe the knight is not defending but this knight is actually defending an important square on f3 but at least one two three anna has only bishop the queen and the bishop this is not enough so she can only uh, hope for perpetual and uh, absolutely nothing more than that so and she needs um she needs to make a forcing move she needs to give a check uh, any slow mo bishop g4 will come bishop g4 check queen f3 will come knight f3 will also come so Every, everything is uh yeah there is no other choice for her and but Anna just decided to play this game so bravely she went for a long castling she sacrificed a pawn she sacrificed not only a pawn after that she sacrificed the bishop then the knight and here we see the position we see the position on the board but it's just very very difficult for black to get uh, a perpetual here because white can just run away and um and maybe this is what anna is seeing she wants to see if she can do something else and actually if anna plays this move king d1 we have had this uh let's see i think this is what she will play this was also played on the board queen h3 and now there are only two possible moves on the board and white of course has to go king g1 
there is nothing else than it would be a mate so white has one move to do and after king d1 anna has to go queen e3 she has to come back and then white can absolutely escape here and here we see uh, what could Anna try to do? She could try to walk with her h pawn. She could try to do that. But after bishop g4 here, king b5, b8, I told you this king has been very nasty here. We're coming here. We can try to go h2, but this pawn is just stopped. And whatever we do, we try to threaten some mate. We have yes, queen f3 or queen e2, and everything is just defended. And we have two pawns more so it's just we had king g1 this was played anna we have this king g1 played anna played queen e3 here now i guess we will see uh now king f1 or rook f2 but it will not be king h1 if her opponent would play king h1 anna could claim a draw so her opponent needs to put the king on f1 or needs to and this is what her opponent played. If this would have been played, Anna could have stopped the clock and she could have said, if I go queen h3, no, the rook was in g2 maybe first time. No, it wasn't even free time. But her opponent, of course, played king f1. And now we can see there is not so much Anna can do because now white has this one, two, three, Young and Druid four pieces defending the king. Anna only has the queen, sub to she has the bishop, this is their and first that is not enough. We see this knight on the rim is too far. This knight should have been needed in the tag on d5. That would have been a beautiful square. If this knight would have been closer or if Anna's king would have been b8, her attack would have been strong but she was missing one move one little move was missing for the attack to um to 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 um to be winning for her at least the way she played she could have sacrificed a piece in another way but it was very very unclear if that would have been enough and i would say it would have been more difficult maybe for black to play that uh, than for white here we have the position anna is thinking um, but there's not so much she can do she can give one more check we have a check and after this move we will surely see maybe rook f2 we can also see uh, any any pieces to f3 this is absolutely fine this is absolutely fine here. And after this h2, we will have rook h1 and we have everything under control. This could absolutely be possible also. So, but maybe, uh, so after this move, but maybe also king e1 and there is not uh, any more checks. We can go h3 here and we have rook g4. And again, there is no more check. If you try to get the queen here now, h2, this we will just grab and with the queen here we have rook f1 no we don't have here but we have bishop f1 i just want to show this because all of a sudden we have a mate here and it's always nice to see but white gives this escaping square we take here and in a position like this uh anna has won back uh yeah this is absolutely fine this is absolutely fine now so this is absolutely fine so maybe queen a4 so what will you see i think we will see rook f2 here in this position like this this is absolutely the best way if she goes to check queen f2 maybe after this king e1 h3 can start getting a little bit a uh, little bit uh, annoying for uh, annoying for white there's no reason to do this after queen f4 check this is position after queen h4 check we will surely see rook f2 because it means that white get this slow move My white gets threatening uh putting the queen on under attack and then white can play any pieces bishop d4 queen f3 it would just be over after this so uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess queen f4 is the only Anna can try. She can go h3 also now. But after h3, uh, I guess we will have... Yeah, I guess Anna will go h3. I think this is absolutely what she will play. And maybe we have a check here. We have the king to b8. Can we see? Maybe good knight f3 be a good move. Maybe this is not, you know, we have a check here. I'm not so. So we need to put the rook somewhere. Rook g5. 
and we can see at after age two we have rook h1 and everything is stopped so this is actually important i'm just wondering can we go here directly will this be any difference no i don't think so if we play like this, we have now queen h3 check, and now it would be winning. And we see all the time why this bishop g4 check is so important. But here, white have this, and why the king on c8. This king on c8 is the reason why Anna's attack is not going. She played h3. She played h3, and I would say that this is what she has to play. It's absolutely what she has to play, but it's not enough. And it's not enough because of this king on c8. It's actually just because of her king. If her king was on b8, this pawn was coming. So now Anna is trying to get. She has the queen. She has the bishop. She has the pawn. She's trying to attack at least with three pieces. So she has another one. And yeah, so... She's threatening to take on g2. Actually, she's threatening to make, uh, she's threatening mate here and some few moves. If Anna was to play, yes, yeah, so you see what will happen. I will just show it. We will just have this. We would have a mate here and very few moves. This would not be possible. So there are some very nasty threat here. Absolutely. The problem is that white has the idea of going rook g1 and after h2, after h2, you will absolutely have. And if you go bishop g3, you want to threaten here. You have again this check. This is so problematic. And you can play queen e2 or queen f3. This would absolutely be fine. You are defending queen e2 or queen f3. Both of them are fine because you want to change queens here. This is not possible. So this is the problem. Always this check. And if Anna tried to go h2, she's threatening to take a queen here. White again have this in-between move, which is such important in-between moves. And uh, you, we can go f5, but after f5, you will absolutely just grab it. King b8, and you go king h1, and I don't see how we can get something here. Maybe yes, queen e2, maybe we can, can we try to play something here? But we have so little material. We had queen h3 here. We are running away and here we can see that it's already whole rook less so it's so her opening played is very very good this was played bishop g4 check uh, Anna will play she will need to move away uh, she will need to move away uh, the king she can go f5 if she wants to but if she goes f5 her opponent will just take it with the bishop mm. So I expect Anna to go king b8. Uh, the king is the safest square. But this move, oh, it's such a pity that when we're castling, we're not allowed to lift the rook, the king to b8. It was starting so, hmm, uh, so badly placed on c8 because there were always some checks. There were some pins we had to look up uh, for. So let's let's see here uh what she's going to do king b8 but i her opponent only have after yeah she can go f5 but after f5 i think her opponent will just uh yes take on f5 we go king b8 and you are moving here to rook j8 and this is what we have seen before here king here i don't know if there could be try some rook h4 but it's just not enough because we can see here, rook f4, that you're defending with one, two, and three. So we can, it's just, uh, we just still have two little pieces. Maybe we can even go king g2 here. We're trying something, rook f8 here, and we will have bishop c1 is coming. I was just wondering, maybe here, could we try something like bishop c1 already here? Yeah, but then we had queen take d4. That is absolutely maybe unnecessary. But maybe rook f2. That's why king g2 and then threatening bishop c1. This is far away. But we see that white is uh, defending everything. But Anna is absolutely trying the best she can do. She's absolutely trying the best. Uh, there is no 
uh, there is no way that she could try something else and the 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 problem is that white has a way to defend against all her threats but this was the right way and after she moved here her if her opponent take here this will absolutely not be so clear any longer rook take because now we have we have a rook here and we have some rook h1 is absolutely coming we are friendly mate here this will be inconvenient maybe this is still winning but uh it's not really necessary to play like this it's not the easiest would be after king b8 would be to move around can and rook here we can just grab it so this is not you won't, don't want to give the rook away so rook g1 would be absolutely a fine way to play here hmm. So it's a check here. Anna is thinking she's down to 21 minutes. They have made like 25 uh, moves. Uh, they have made uh, 25 moves. And uh, Anna is attacking with all the forces she has, all the forces. And she's just missing this knight. If this knight was closer, it could have been working. But without the knight, hmm, it looks like white is able to save this but uh if white goes wrong anna can absolutely be in the game she can absolutely be in the game but we shouldn't forget that she's playing against a very strong player a grandmaster and he is you know he is very he's very strong he will probably find the right way and then it's very difficult to justify that anna has sacrificed two pieces in this position And yeah, so um, yeah, Anna is she doesn't she needs it to check so she needs either f five or move the king. These are the uh, these are the moves she can choose from f five or move the king. There really nothing else she can do. Um, this is absolutely nothing else but but she's calculating she's trying to see if uh it could be better to put the bishop on f5 and the idea to put the bishop on f5 is to get rook h uh here because here there is a threat against g2 there's a threat against bishop but we take here and we moving way you have this move and i don't know putting a rook here we can just play something something yeah this was absolutely a good move and maybe can we go rook h5 could this be a way but then i guess we can just go maybe here we can also go can we go bishop yeah we can even go bishop c1 this is good so this is absolutely a uh, problem here yeah it's not enough to, to get more pieces so f5 or king bait i think it will not be enough either way but it's very important that after f5 why doesn't have time for knight take f5 because we take care we check and this would absolutely be a checkmate i will just yes, show you here mm. so so this is not possible so sometimes we have these moments where there are lots of pieces hanging we need to make force move and the most forcing move is of course we check so if anna this is the position if anna play f5 her opponent needs to take the f5 pawn but he takes it with check and it means that he can take the pawn and then has time to save his rook also so let's see anna yeah she is uh yeah calculating and of course this is absolutely right she is uh, hoping that opening up could help her but uh yeah as i said we have a knight here far away from the actions this knight close to the king's side would make her i think so much more stronger so this then she would actually have one more piece in the game and then it would have been one one more piece not in the game but in the attack two three and if this one was let's say f4 maybe it could be an a d5 something something closer that would be uh making a lot of difference and uh, but it's here on the rim and uh white seems to be able 
to just keep everything under the control. And white is also sitting there because Anna doesn't have so many things to choose from. So is she going to play f5? Is she going to go king b8? I guess she's going to go f5, uh, but whatever. Um, yeah, I think it's just, uh, it will not make such a difference. Uh, because white has these two knights. If white didn't have one of these two knights to defend the king, it would be another story. But the problem is that white has two knights. And it's actually saying that when you are defending, the best piece to defend the king is the knight. So having a knight close to the king is normally a very good way of defending the king and the king's side. And this is also why we in the opening like to put the knight on f3 with black, the knight on f6, castling. And we have a knight which is standing very close to our king, which is both active. And here it came f5. She played f5 with lots of energy. And uh, here there is, I would say, more or less uh, one move her, her opponent can play. Of course, her opponent can also go rook g1. Uh, so either, but the most logical move is to take on f5, absolutely to take on f5, and then to save the rook. This is absolutely most logical. Maybe this we could play, check here, king b8. But now why to play like this? We put maybe rook f8, we have, maybe we go something like h3, h2, we have rook h1, but now the problem is, Rook e1 is coming, um, and the problem is that if you go something like rook f8, the knight, this knight is defended by it, so we can just go rook e1, and everything is just uh, defended. We will not be able to take on f3, because we can take back like this if we want, but uh, we can take back actually which, which way we want, because f3 is defended by the knight and by the queen. Let's go back. So even rook e1 is a possibility. Uh, not only, so sorry, this is the position, but uh, bishop take f5 or rook g1. These are the two moves. Any other moves, I guess, uh, would just um, let Anna be uh, in the game. But like that, because two pieces are too much. One piece in this position could be fine to have sacrificed, but Anna needed, she felt that they needed to give two pieces to open up in front of the king, and that is quite a lot. That is very, very much. And yeah, so her opponent, uh, Platon Galpuri, he's rated number eight in this very beautiful tournament in Reykjavik. I am sitting in Stockholm. And I will comment uh, this, uh, this nine games Anna is playing and I am uh, Pia, Pia Kramling, I'm Anna's mother and uh, it will be just yes, very, very exciting. I would have loved also to be there to play, but instead I will be here with you and I will comment on this tournament. And Reykjavik Open, the first time the tournament was held was 1964. So this is 60 years back. It was a round robin tournament. I think it was used to be held every second year. The first winner was um, Michael Tal. I think he had made like, uh, was it 12 and a half in 13 games. He has won almost all his games. In, and, um, so that was the first tournament. I played the 11th tournament. It was only 40 years back. But this is the tournament number 39. For a long time, Reykjavik opened. Reykjavik, the tournament Reykjavik, was held like every second year. The last years, it has been held every year. But during the pandemic, they had to cancel it. So uh, let's see. The number one in the tournament is a uh, grandmaster from Romania, Bogdan Diak. I think it's like 2670, something like that. And second player is Vasily Ivanchuk. And he is uh, one of these legend players one he was one of the strongest players in the world but not uh not becoming a world champion but he was very very you know rated in the top but he never became a world champion he still keeps on playing he still is a fantastic uh, player and uh he's the number two and bishop take f5 this is very well logical i think we'll see king b8 this is absolutely 
the normal move, the king hides away, and we would have wished that it stayed there before. That would have changed so many things. If the king had stayed on B8, lots of defense maneuvers that her opponent uh, uh, has done would have been different. Her opponent moved the rook. I think rook g1 was played. I think rook g1 was played. I can't see it really, but I think rook g1 was played. And we can see that her opponent is stopping the pawn. I'm quite sure we'll see the pawn to h2. And now we see why this bishop is so important. Because if Anna play h2, rook h1, because she threatened mate in one, rook h1, now Anna would love to go queen h3. But it's not possible because of the bishop. And this is why this maneuver, getting the bishop to g4, getting the bishop to this diagonal, was very important for white. Otherwise, white would have been under a strong attack. It would have been very, very dangerous. It would, uh, it would maybe have been winning, but it would have been uh, completely different things. Uh, it could have been actually winning if white didn't have the check. So this made a lot, lot of difference. And um, like we have seen in in many moments here in the game. So uh, let's see, this is the position. The rook is on g1, I believe. I don't really see it. It's a little bit hidden behind the king, but it cannot be hidden somewhere else. So rook g1 was played. And the reason was the rook was under attack. And it's also to stop this pawn because white doesn't want black to be able to queen the pawn. And you know, if you go rook here and here, we go rook f8. If Anna was to move, she would be winning with queen h3 because this rook is just threatening to pin here. But the problem is that white has knight f3. White maybe has also queen f3, but then we will take a piece. No, you don't want it. So, but white has this the fantastic move. And we see there are too many defenders of f3. There are too many defenders of f3 because it's the queen, but it's also this knight. And there is not time for Anna to do anything. And we can see if you try to make a move like this, the play against d4, we have, I guess, bishop c1 could also be played. And we see that this queen is trapped because if you take care, the knight has time to take back. So this is these are problems and there is no time to take an f5. We'll just take back and we threaten the queen and the bishop. So here Anna is now, she's getting a little bit low. Yeah, she played, this is the position. She played h2, she threatened mate in one, but her opponent, yes, moving the rook and also stopping this pawn. If this pawn could have moved further, Anna would actually have been winning the game. She would have been winning the game if the rook didn't stop it. But the rook is stopping the pawn. And uh, the problem is that Anna doesn't have enough pieces. This one, knight is still the far away. She can go rook f8, but after rook f8, uh, white can go uh, play different moves. But I would say knight f3 is the easiest. Can we even play? Can we even play like this? And we can go knight f3. Maybe we can play like this. But then we will play with a piece less, and uh, this would absolutely be. Uh, let's see here. Queen e2. Oh, yeah, I'm a little bit queen e2. If you take here, yeah. I'm sorry. If you take here. We will just take back. So this would just be very logical. Um, so. And I think we have been looking at this queen h3, I don't know, maybe queen d2, or maybe yes, maybe queen d2, king e1 could also, I think it doesn't really matter what you do. And we can see in this position, we have a pawn on h2, but it's a whole rook less. So uh, everything here was very, very logical. I guess we will see rook to f8. I think this is what Anna will play. But unfortunately, she's bringing in another piece but white has so many pieces to defend uh, on this open uh, on this open file. So this knight, this beautiful knight on d4, has been so so strong. It has been very well placed here. It has been also um, a piece that has made some tactics didn't work for Anna, 
because it was controlling this F5 square and E6. Now it's not only, so it was a good piece sometimes for attacking uh, black F5 and E6, but it's also a very good piece to defend F3. So this one has been a very, very important piece, I would say. And of course, Bishop B2, so it made it possible for the knight to stay here. So uh, what could we see here? I guess Rook F8 is absolutely the most probably. If you go with this Rook F8, I guess again, we will have Knight F3. And again, we always have this Bishop C1 and we can see that the queen is trapped. And so it's, um, yeah. And if you go something like Bishop G3, we have just Queen E2 and uh, everything is just defended. Hmm. So let's see, Anna, what will she play? This was Rook G1, Rook H1 was the last move played. Um, this was the last move played. And yeah, uh, she will try to bring in uh, another piece, I guess. Uh, she can try with rook h4 is also a way of doing it, but we have this knight f3. And here it came, rook h4 was played, and one idea is if you go queen f3, we will have rook f4, and we will absolutely be in the game, we will win the queen. And But you can go here, you can go queen e2 even, can we play this, can we give a check here, and we just put the knight on f3, and there is no way we can do anything. So rook h4, I don't know. I think queen e2 is normal. We can also say rook f3 could be a move here. And if we go rook f4, yeah, we remember we always have this maybe bishop c1 or maybe we go just uh, queen e2. We just want to exchange pieces. I think this is also absolutely fine. Yeah, so it's just difficult. She tries to get another piece in but she is always missing one move. Uh, also, if she could play, she would like to take on d4 to get at least one piece back. Uh, but she will still, she would stay, yeah, she would play with the rook less. It wouldn't help. But yeah, rook f4, knight f3, it's not enough. But she's trying to get the rooks in, trying to play, um, trying to, to get... Uh, her rooks in, so her dream, the dream of Anna is to go rook f4 and rook f8 to get the rooks from their flying and then this, she, if she could have take away this bishop and to have the rook, both rooks here on f line, then her attack would finally get through. But this bishop on f5 is actually very good because it's blocking, so this rook will not entering attack. And the problem is also that white with like something like this can absolutely just try to exchange queens. And this is, I think, absolutely, I think we'll see queen e2 or maybe knight f3, one of these, I believe we will see uh, one of these moves. Knight f3 was very logical because uh, going with that one, one is also that you're taking the rook, one is also that you're having this plan of bishop c1 and just forcing the queen to go back and uh, so I guess, and if you now, if you go rook f4, we go queen c1. No, we don't go because we have queen take d4. So rook f4 could absolutely be, uh, um, could be a possibility, but I think we will see queen e2 here, and there is no way that we can avoid uh, queen exchange here. There's no way. So this is what she's going to do here, Anna. After rook f4, white won't to change queens. We will get our queen exchange because uh, also the knight defends f3. This is not possible. We just take it back with whatever we want. Maybe queen take f3 looks very fine. So I think that was a knight f3 was a very logical move. And you know, yeah, this is so difficult. Uh, I have no idea. She has doesn't have any good square for the rook. If she comes here, maybe we even can go bishop g4 and just, or we can go bishop g6. We just go after the rook and the rook doesn't have any good squares. And it's because she has, white is controlling so many squares with this bishop. If you try to put the rook here, for example, let's see this position. If you go rook h6, 
yeah, we have bishop c1, and we will just grab the rook. So we will even grab more material. And you can see here, the two bishops are playing together. So this was a very logical move. Uh, white is about material. White wants to either change the queen, or white will even grab more material. And it's just saying, where are you going with this rook? And this rook doesn't have any good square. It doesn't have any good square because after rook f4, yeah, we can get, then we get our queen exchange. We take in here, we take us back with the queen. Now Anna play rook h6, but after rook h6, I, and the idea is uh, after bishop c1, uh, yes, you can go bishop c1 because we cannot take on d4. You need to go, the queen need to come back and we can actually even take here and in position like this, we can see that black white is having a rook and a piece more. This is just, just no, no chance. So, uh, but anyway, there was no, whatever she did in this position, whatever she did here, and this, it was difficult. Anna went for bishop a, rook h4, knight f3 came. She realized she wanted to go back, but there is nothing she can do. And I think Anna has understood that her attack was not enough. She really tried, but it was uh, it was just one move missing, one move missing, and badly placed king, badly placed king on c8. This king was actually deciding the destiny of white's king, I would say. This king would actually made uh, white's defensive ideas working from uh, the whole way, uh, the way Anna launched a very, very uh, exciting idea, but not really enough to catch the king. So uh, rook h6, what will white do? You know, white can also play, I, I actually expect white to go queen e2, queen f4, and now maybe bishop c1, and then grab, uh, and then grab the, the rook. But white played queen e1. Ah, that was white played queen e1. So white wants to take. And the idea with queen e1 is after queen e4, one's wanting to go bishop c1. And you can see that the queen is trapped. The queen is trapped. And this was the idea. Because after bishop c1, we don't, okay, we can go here, but we will have this queen. Uh, exactly exchange and this is what we're seeing so her opponent played queen one bishop f4 and now we have bishop c1 there is no way for anna to avoid queen that the queens get off the board so anna will need to play this but then we can take and take and we take here and take and we see this is rook and a piece up, there's absolutely nothing black can do in this position, absolutely nothing. So uh, this is how, uh, uh, yeah. So this was queen e1 was, yeah, the maybe more uh, forcing move. Uh, this was played, rook h6, bishop queen e1, queen e4, and we have bishop c1, queen g3. And I just think Anna will just play out the moves a little bit here, and here, and let's see. Uh, no, this is not played. This is queen takes. Uh, yeah, bishop takes, and I guess we will see bishop take h6, and then I think this will be the end of the game. Anayas took back. And uh, but here now we this is absolutely uh, nothing she can do here. Uh, King g2 was played, and the idea if you try something, rook j8, there is absolutely you can go king h3, and we see that the king is very safe on the white square. Only thing, if we could bring this knight to f4, we would have a beautiful mate, but it would need one, two, three moves. But this. It's, it's not enough. So rook g8, if Anna wants, she could play this. I think this is what we'll see. This was also played. So the king attacked the rook. Anna played rook g8. And after, yeah, yeah, but there's nothing special. I think we will see, she, maybe bishop b6, maybe rook f1, or maybe 
uh, bishop e6, yes, this is not she, because now there is no good square for the rook. If you go rook e7, we have a fork here, so this is a good move. So maybe Anna needs to go rook g6, but then you have bishop f7, that needs to go, and we will go bishop f5, and we will just grab this. So, mm. so this is just bishop e6 was a good move. I think Anna will, uh, she will, yeah, I don't know, maybe she wants to make some more moves, but there's not so much she can do. She played rook g6, yes, to annoy a little bit, but I believe we will see bishop f7, and after that, uh, there's not so much she can do. The rook g7, and we will have knight f5, and this is the saying we have. We have pieces more material bow, and we want to change. Uh, or, yeah, with piece master, of course, we want to change pieces. And uh, yeah, because there will just be less pieces for Anna to play with. So I think this is the position. And uh, unfortunately, uh, this game uh, will probably finish uh, soon. There is not so much Anna can do in this position. She doesn't have so many pieces left, but she played very bravely. She went for long castling and she uh, tried to launch an attack. Um, it didn't work, but it was very, very close for working. But let's see, Anna wants to make a move. What will she make here? I think, uh, whatever, what she will she make here? Uh, yeah, let's see what she will do. I, I think, yeah. She will play rook g7, this was played. We will absolutely see knight f5 here. Absolutely see that on the board. And uh, here it came. Here it came knight f5. And we see that Anna wins a piece, but black white also wins that one. And I guess Anna will just uh, resign. And here it came. So there was nothing she could do. There was nothing she could do actually. And she was, uh, it looks like they are going, maybe the white go out and analyze to look at the game. But you know, this was, uh, Anna played against a strong player. You see Platon Galperin, 2555, rated number eight in the tournament. He's a grandmaster and um, he had 400 points, 450 points more than Anna. So it was like, uh, it was, uh, and he was having the white pieces and he played the cow opening. I couldn't believe that. He played the cow opening and we could see that there was a little bit smile on Anna's face when he played that. And Anna, in some moments, she decided to go for this long castling and give a pawn and then sacrifice. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't real enough. But Anna, she went all in. She went really all in. And it's like when she gave a pawn, she understood that she can't play slowly. She needed to play something quickly. There were different ways of sacrificing a piece, but the question was, was it enough? The way Anna chose, White could save uh, himself, but we saw that Anna's king, I guess it was Anna's king that made it uh, possible for White to defend. And uh, because there were always a check here on g4, there were always or sometimes also a pin. So this king on c8, and it's also the knight on the rim that never entered the game. And that's its danger with a knight on the rim. But this was the first round for Anna. There are lots of players still playing the first round. Anna is going to have eight more games to play. She is coming. She's coming soon here. She will be with you. She will tell you uh, about her thoughts in the game. And tomorrow she's going to play again. Tomorrow there will be a double round. I believe they will play at... 10 o'clock CET, I think so. I think they will play at 10 o'clock CET, 9 o'clock uh, Icelandic time. I'm not really sure, but I believe so. It will absolutely be out on her side, so you can check that. But tomorrow there will be a double round. And so 
uh, there will be a very, very tough uh, day. Anna will probably play tomorrow with the white pieces. She will play against a weaker opponent than today. Absolutely. She will absolutely play with a, uh, not such a strong player. It might be that she is on the... I'm not sure if she's going to be on the first or she will play against a weaker, a stronger player. We will see that, but probably she will have the white pieces. And there are eight more exciting games going on. Anna is going to play eight more uh, exciting games today. There was a very tough day, but Anna, she went all in and to try if she can get her opponent to uh, a little bit to get out uh, of his route. But he played his short castling. He played well. He, he just grabbed the pawn and he was not scared to say to put his king into safety. So now they will need to go. I think actually the arbiter is asking them to leave uh, because sometimes when you have finished a game, if there are lots of games going on, you're not really allowed to sit there and speak because you can bother the other opponents, not the opponents, the other players. So, but you can see that how they are uh, speaking about the game, both of them. But just stay here. Anna will be with you at any moment. She will give you her thoughts, her, what she has been thinking, why she played, the moves she did. And uh, you see, the cow opening is absolutely possible to play. And um, today we saw that Anna had to play it in a classical game. It must be first time for her in a classical game against the cow opening. So we can see how they are sitting and analyzing. And this is also quite normal to do. It seems like they can stay there a little bit, that they're not bothering any other players. And that you analyze, and you, even if you don't move the pieces, but you have some ideas and you say, was this a good move or should I have done that or this? So you're a little bit analyzing a blind uh, fold. And um, uh, yes, to, uh, sometimes you do it directly there. Sometimes you go away, you take a, go to the analyzing room and you sit together. And uh, I, I have a brother who loves to play chess, the uncle of Anna, Don, and he can analyze for hours and hours after the game. So, but I believe Anna will be here at any moment after they have uh, analyzed enough. They have speaking about the game. I think she is coming here. So yes, stay, stay here. And she will be here just to explain all her ideas why she played it, what she felt when her opponent played e3. I think after the first move e3, she didn't expect it yet. But after the second move, yes, she knew what was coming. But we have to hear it from Anna. Absolutely, we will have to hear it from her. So this is the first round. Tomorrow will be a double round. Sunday will be one round and on Monday there's another double round and after that they will play three single rounds. So it's quite a tough schedule uh, they are having but it's also to make the tournament shorter to make it more easier for uh, lots of amateurs to come. And here we had the arbiter saying please you are you must be more quiet so they realize they cannot stay there no longer and Anna will come here. So just stay, stay some few minutes and Anna will be here with you. And yeah, you see, uh, they have score sheets on the board. So in a classical game, you need to write down uh, the, the, the moves you are playing. You can see the white king is on a white square. The black king is on a white square. It means that white has won. If the kings were in front of each other, it would have been a draw. And if the kings were in black square, it means that black has won. And this is what you do with the digital board. So the digital board knows the result of the game. And yeah. So yeah, here she is coming at any, any moment. And we see that there's still lots of games uh, going on there. There's still lots of games. We can see some grandmasters there uh, to the left. And, uh, but Anna will be here now with you to tell you about the first round. And of course, Anna knew when she saw the pairing that this was going to be a very tough first uh, round. And uh, yeah, so here she is uh, coming.
to be here with you. And this is actually, I believe, Anna has to tell me if it's, I think this is actually the fourth time Anna is playing. She played last year, 23rd, 2023, she played 2022, and I believe she has played one time earlier also. But it could be, uh, yeah, so, but she will tell you about it. But she has played uh, several times in Reykjavik Open, which is, yes, the favorite open for lots of of uh, players and it has been growing if you go like 10 years back i think it was about 100 players now there are around 400 players and it's open for any player you can be unrated you can have 1000 or 1100 you are allowed to play here and you uh, also you have these strong grandmasters with 2500 2500 or 2600 So we will see. Ah. Yes, now, yes, Anna will be here at any moment. She will be here at any moment. So, because it's so exciting to hear the comments after the plays. I don't know if your opponent also will come or it will only be Anna, who will come here to, to tell you about the game. And yeah, so here we see the last position. Anna was so much material done, so there was just nothing she could do. So yes, today the cow opening won. So that's what I thought. Anna lost her game, but the cow opening won. And Anna has been playing so much and I really believed in it so much. It's not my favorite opening, but and now today she had to face it. So let's see, she will be with you at any moment. She will absolutely be with you at any moment. And uh, let's see when she will uh, come here. And yeah, so Yeah, so this was just uh, the absolutely first game out of this night. Yeah, maybe the cow opening is making history. I don't know if we will uh, see any more cow opening in in this tournament. I don't believe her opponent will play it again, but you never know. It could be could be someone else also who wants to play it. But it was just uh, such a big surprise to see it uh, today. <clears throat> so yeah I don't think you're open I will play every game the cow opening and I don't know I don't think uh, Anna will play it either but we, we never know I know um, I, I know uh, once my brother actually played against A3 and he lost the game. His opponent played A3 the first game and then he played A3 himself the same day. So some players could be that when their opponent has played an opening and they might try it. But I don't think Anna will play it tomorrow. But we never know. We never know. So, uh, so. Uh, yes, yes, stay a little bit longer. Yes, stay a little bit longer because Anna will come here at any moment. Uh, yes, it is true. In that moment when Anna sacrificed a piece, she took uh, with the bishop on h3. It would have been stronger to take with the knight on h3 to keep the bishops and to try to attack that way. That would have been a better way. She would keep the both bishop because the way Anna played, but Anna will show it, the way Anna played, she felt she had to give two pieces and that was absolutely, that was too much, but it was a little bit close, actually a little bit close that it could have been working, but we had this bishop g4 check. We had the bishop coming in with check using that Anna's king was on be it. So I believe that if the other way was a stronger way to attack and we could see that Anna thought that she needed, she really needed to do something not to have to face a long game with a pawn less without having anything and that's why she launched this attack. 
Yeah, the night and the age made a difference, and this can happen lots of time. And that's why I believe that uh, when you're playing, so try to put the night in the middle. If you put the night on the edge, quickly put it so it comes into the center because the night is so uh, it's normally badly placed on the rim. But there are some lines where you actually go to the rim and then later on you put it in the center. But um, here we saw that this night never entered the game and if it would have been in the middle, if it would have been in the center or on the king side, lots of things would have been different. Anna would have had one more piece to play with. She would absolutely have had one more piece to play with, to attack with. It could have changed lots of things. But this night, so remember that careful with the knight on the rim, it could be that it will not enter. And you can see that the knight on the rim only have four squares Y in the center. It would be uh, able to uh, control so many more squares. So, uh, and today Anna played uh, black. Normally she will be white. And this is why when you play tournaments, normally there are nine games because it's easier with the colors. You will have maybe five whites or five blacks. But normally it will be very, it's, it's very, very exceptional that you will get like, uh, here we have Anna. She will be here with you. Now she will be here with you. So she is going live. So bye bye, bye bye from me. And Anna.
In there? Uh, In dashboard. Hello, chat. Am I here? Okay, chat, did I save it? I think I saved that. Tech Anna. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, it took a little while to figure things out, but anyways, it's the first day. Chat, can you believe that my opponent played the cow opening against me? Like, what just happened? I was so sure that I was winning, like, during the game. Like, I was so sure that I was winning. And then, I don't know if I was, like, was I ever, was I ever winning? I wish that I could, like, talk to my mom right now. Can, can you tell me, chat, was I ever winning? Or was I not? Um, wait, I'm also gonna have you guys, wait, I'm just gonna have, I'm, you know what, I'm gonna sit here. And I'm just going to, like, talk to, oh, I think I unplugged something. Did I break something? No, I didn't break anything. Okay, okay, there we go. Was I winning? Oh, cow is too strong. You know what? There was a part of me during the game that thought, I obviously really want to beat this grandmaster. Like, I was as competitive as I can be. Like, you saw it. But then there was a part of me that was like, if I now lose, or if I now beat the cow, if I beat a grandmaster who plays the cow, then the cow will officially be the worst opening in the whole world. Like, then the cow will literally, like, make the books of the worst opening you can play. Because even a grandmaster would lose with it, you know, against the 2100. So I just realized that, like... <laughs> but that didn't stop me from, you know, obviously giving it my best. But I think that I got a little bit too excited when I saw this kind of maneuver of sacrificing two pieces. I really thought that at least I had a draw. Like, I thought it was so dangerous for my opponent. Um, but I, I think it just doesn't work. I think I just gave too many pieces. I think in that position, I'm just better. I should just somehow, like, like um, I should just somehow, like, um, improve my position, maybe play king b8, maybe play g5, and just, yeah, not do anything crazy. But I don't know. I really just thought the knight takes, no, sorry, bishop takes h3 was good. Like, I really just thought it was good. But chat, does bishop takes h3 work? Also, by the way, hello, YouTube chat. Why is YouTube chat working? Hello, YouTube chat. This is my first stream on YouTube. Oh, this is crazy. Chat, you have no idea how much, like, panic I had before the round today. Like, I don't understand. I set this thing up the whole day yesterday. And today, obviously, like always, we had tech issues, like, right before, right? So I actually had no lunch. And I had, like, barely prepared before this round. So when you played the cow opening, I was so happy. <laughs> I, had, I haven't had food since like 9 a.m. I am so hungry. I could hear my stomach during the game. And I was like, this is awkward. Like, I hope people don't hear this. Like, it was really awkward. Like, it was really loud. I was like, I'm so happy this camera is muted because like, you can hear my stomach. Like, I am so hungry. <laughs> I was so hungry. <laughs> but, yeah. <sighs> Guys, chess is hard. Just sorry. Also, you have no idea about this, but I'm gonna give you a piece of inside information, okay? Like, nobody knows this, literally nobody. So, so listen, like everybody that's watching this live, you guys are getting some inside information. Um, Super Grandmaster Jules Moussard came to me after the, before the game, before the game started, he came to me and he said, Anna, if you win today, I will gift you a hundred subs. And I was like, yes, you know, let's do it. And then he thought that I was completely winning. So he came back to my game several times because he was panicking because he thought he was losing a bunch of money. <laughs> and he was so scared during the, he came to watch my game, like you're pro you probably saw it. Like he came to watch my game like 10 times. <laughs> He was so scared when I sacrificed everything and all my pieces were around my opponent's king. He wasn't calculating, but he, I could see the panic in his face. Like, he was so terrified because <laughs> he never thought I would have a chance of winning. <laughs> he was just so funny. <laughs> it was just so funny. But yeah, but it was, it was really fun to play again. I don't even know what time it is. Oh, it's only like six. Oh, this was like a short game. Yeah, it's so fun to be back playing chess, guys. Like, you have no idea how much I've missed playing competitive chess. And like, today really reignited that spark for me. And I realized that when I was sitting there and calculating and everything, like, I'm the same Anna that plays classical chess every tournament. And 
I'm really happy. Like, I'm really, really, really happy. And I think I found some good moves. I think D4 was good. Let me know if my mom roasted it. But I think D4 was good. The sacrifice of the pawn. Like, my mistake was miscalculating the sacrifices of the pieces. But it looked really good. So, yeah. I'm actually quite happy. I'm actually quite happy with the game. And also, um, I think one problem that I had during the game was that because, because I like only play the cow opening and blitz my brain was like this is a blitz game this is a you know what i mean this is a like online game like i was like let me sacrifice and do crazy stuff you know it's like anna this is a classical game but i've never played against the cow in classical or never seen this position in classical so I was like, so not in the sense of me like playing fast, but in the sense of me like sacrificing a bunch of pieces. But I also have to say something. Like when my opponent went 1e3, I started thinking like, there's no way. But I was like, what opening starts with 1e3? But I was like, there's no way. Like I could almost have played e6 if I knew I was gonna play the cow. But then he goes d3 and I'm like, is he baiting me? Is he trying to like play the hippo? But is he baiting me? Is he like pretending like, you know, he's gonna play the cow to make me play the cow myself. And then like, he's going to anti-cow me. You know what I mean? So I got really scared of the psychology here. And I was like, no. So I played like d5, e5, knight f6. And then he goes knight e2. And then I, I started laughing in my brain. I was like, there's no way. Like there is no way he's actually doing this. But he was, like he literally was. Like I was like, yeah, I just thought it was insane. I just thought it was insane. Um, so yeah, that was, that was that, that was that. But chat, it was, it was a really fun game. Um, I enjoyed it and he was super nice as well after. And um, yeah, it, it was a great game. I, I think we had maybe a few tech issues today, like this thing at the end. So we're gonna fix it for tomorrow. Today was just a bit stressful because it was my first time as well streaming on YouTube. Um, and yeah, things got really late. Like I, f I was here like two hours early and I finished everything one minute before the game. So I'm just happy we got things working. Like always, things are going to get better and better for each round. So tomorrow it'll be a completely tech issue free day. And I'm, uh, I'm excited. We'll also fix the, si fix the sync problem with my mom. I saw that there was some sync problem. So we will fix, fix that for tomorrow. But chat... Tomorrow we have double rounds. We have two rounds. It starts at 9 a.m. Iceland time. Like, I am playing chess at 9 a.m. What? What? Like, I have not been awake at 9 a.m. in for like in a long time. Um, so yeah, so tomorrow, 9 a.m. First round. We're gonna have two rounds. We're gonna be having two streams. Um send some love to my mom for commentating. I'll probably have the white pieces tomorrow against the lower rated. Send some love to mom for commentating. It wasn't the long round, but it was a crazy round. So send her some love because uh, chat, believe it or not, today chess history was made. First time I think ever the cow is played in classical. This game is going to be going to the books. This game is going to be going to chess base and to chess databases in the future. I think that today history was made. First time a grandmaster plays the cow in classical chess as well. Like, this is insane. So, I, <laughs> I hope you guys understand how big this is. Um, and once again, send, send a big heart to mom for commentating, for being here. She's been a trooper yesterday as well. Like, we were setting things up. She was there, like, for so long supporting and everything. So send her some love. She's been, you know, really doing her absolute everything to make this work. And, and she deserves a lot of love. So send her some hearts in chat. Send her some hearts in chat. There we go. There we go. But guys, I just want to say that we've officially made it. The cow has become theory in chess.com. The cow has now been played by a grandmaster in an international like chess tournament in classical chess. And this is just the beginning of the cow. Future generations will look at this game and will get inspired. I am sure. <laughs> I am sure. <laughs> no copium at all all right guys i'm gonna send you all off uh, i'm gonna raid because i, I, I want to get some food and i also i'm gonna film the recap um we're gonna be having some filming going on so you know if you missed the round today then 
do not worry, there will be a recap. But not only that, I will also be posting the whole VOD on Anna Kramling Extra, which is my second channel where I post all the streaming stuff. If you want to catch my streams, but you can't always be here, watch Anna Kramling Extra. So can we get can we get a little bit of links and chat mods that says Anna Kramling Extra? Um, the VOD will be uploaded there very soon, today. We're gonna be having the recap uploaded, hopefully today too. And yeah, I'll be going through the analysis of this game and let you know my thoughts and go a little bit more in depth of every move. So if you missed it, check that out. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm excited, I'm excited. There we go, there we have it. There we have the links, amazing. I'm excited. So, okay guys, I'm gonna rate you all. Not the people on YouTube, because you can't rate on YouTube. I am so sorry. <laughs> But thank you for watching on YouTube, everybody that's watched my YouTube live stream. First YouTube live stream, hopefully, you know, yeah, it all went well, but like, I feel so like, I don't even know what has happened the past four hours. I've just played a game with chess. But yeah, thank you so much for watching on YouTube as well. Thank you so much for watching on Twitch. Oops, I'm dropping this. And uh, I will see you all tomorrow for round two, 9 a.m. Iceland time. Do not miss it. I'm going to go now and see if I wanna laugh or cry. I might want to cry if I see that I was winning at some point, but no, I'm not going to laugh, actually. There's no scenario where I laugh. I don't know why I said that. I'm literally not going to laugh at all because I'm actually a bit sad that I lost, but I mean, it was against the Grandmaster, but yeah. Anyways, uh, or, I'm kidding. Laughing is good. Okay, I'm going to send a raid. I don't... Do I have battery over here? Yes, I do. Okay, guys, wait. I'm going to send a raid. I'm going to send a raid. So, let's do this, everybody. Let's do this. Let's do this. Who do we raid? Who's even live right now? Is Botas live? Who's even live? Give me a name. Botas, are they live? Okay. I hope they're doing well. They're sitting close to me. Um, I hope they're doing well. Also, I saw some people saying, Anna, how come you're not sitting with all the other streamers? Well, because it was really cramped. Like, it was like very little space for all the streamers. So I got board number five. And it was really funny because this French grandmaster, I think his name is like Cornette or something, he was like, Anna, you literally kicked me off my board. <laughs> I was like, I am so sorry. He had to sit somewhere else because I took his like number five board. <laughs> and I was like, I am so sorry. Like, <laughs> it was so funny. But, uh, but yeah, so I was able to do that. But got a good board at least. Well, I'll, I'll check the angle today too to see if the angle, if we can improve it for tomorrow. But anyways, chat. 9 a.m. Don't miss it. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, Twitch. Go and support both us now. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching the stream. And I hope you are as excited as I am for this whole tournament for Reykjavik Open. Okay, I'll see you all tomorrow, chat. Bye. 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 Bye.